Luce Theron had come back. Or else, he really was mad already. Either way, it was a reason to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarus. And this is The Nerdy. The, the Wordy. Nerdy. The, the Book Club? club. <laughs> Sorry, I knew what you were You're like, say. I'm going to jump in on that and one. And so I was like, you know what? Let's just like be on it. Welcome back to Path of Daggers Week 2. This time we're covering chapters 7 through 14. I have read your comments. I know that I do a bad job of saying what chapters at the beginning of the episode. Oopsie. Because yeah, I figure you read it, but whatever. You know what? That is actually fair. We should, we should, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am a salty, salty boy. You um, Me never. Uh, Y'all, welcome to a new room. A new space. A different, a different location. Yes. In the world. Yes. Blue! Drop in an early five memberships. Welcome to those five. Blue, thank you so much. Blue, Appreciate thank you. you constantly. Thank um, you. <laughs> so we are not going to spend a lot of time talking about our new place today. Yes. We're um, here for book club, god damn it. Yeah, so uh, rather than spend an hour about that, mm -hmm. we're going to do a special um, Monday stream mm -hmm. on the channel where we're going to talk about everything and we're going to get into um, the new place a bit more, what's been going on with my health, and everything. So if you want to know about yeah. like our personal life a little bit more than what we're about to say, yeah. come back Monday morning, 11 a.m., same time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a, like a special like catch up on what's going on in our life stream. Yes. Uh, that's going to be really fun. <laughs> but um, how are you doing, Clarice? I'm good. I'm good. Just just so you know, this is not the finalized look. We're, we're still yeah. tweaking things and figuring it out. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm good. I'm, I'm doing so much better. Yes. Now that we are like finally uh, breathing for a moment. Yeah, me as well. Um, for those of you who, uh, j but we'll get into more details on Monday, but I mm -hmm. was unhealthy and I am now healthy. So Yay. thanks to our new place. I have not had one episode of whatever that was since we moved. Mm -hmm. So yeah. cheers to me getting to sleep and not being sick all the time. And cheers to Dragon Snacks for gifting five memberships. Dragon Snacks gif gifting five dang nightly Thank memberships. Thank you so much. Um, my caffeine, your caffeine. Yes. My caffeine, you can order at gamersubs.gg with coupon code Clarus. But I don't, don't put, put it, their don't put their bottles in the dishwasher. Yeah, don't do don't do that. It's, yeah, it it doesn't end well. That's my hand egg. wash only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's fine. No worry uh, about it. Slick Jack asks one question: Are you in Toronto proper, or have you migrated to suburbia? Both. I mean, yeah, we are in the greater Toronto area. If there's a line, we're on it. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, guys, downtown Toronto, there is no way that we could afford a space big enough for what we do unless we were yeah. paying $8,000 a month. Um, Even then, I don't know if that, like, I don't know that this kind of a space exists without being in a very old house. Yeah. That yeah, might not yeah. even be wired for what we do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, we're not in, like, the core of Toronto. We are... Yeah. We're a little... You're nearby. A little outside the city. Um, edging Toronto, yes. We are, we are edging Toronto. Yes. That mm -hmm, is true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, before we... God damn it. I can't believe I'm about to make this transition. Before we get into the podcast, it's important to note that this podcast is brought to you by... Edging. Audible. Sorry. <laughs> Fanta would be proud. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Audible, a service that somehow still allows us to put their name on our podcast, despite how awful and ridiculous we are. I wonder if they've ever seen it. I, they have the link, like they can. So yeah. Audible is an incredible service. Uh, I, I think the reason we get away with it is because we're like we a suck, book club. but we're never mean about Audible because Audible's great. Oh. Like I don't, I don't have anything bad to say about Audible. Yeah, audiobooks are awesome. If mm -hmm. you are the kind of person who doesn't want to read but wants to hear books, that's possible now. We live in the future, you guys. This is no longer your daddy's book club where you have to sit down on your couch and read the way that I do in my new recliner couch because I'm an old, old man. No, you can sit anywhere with your AirPod Max Pros in or whatever headphones you use, and you can listen to a person 
who had previously recorded the audiobook. I mean, look, if you're really rich, you can probably like pay someone to do it live. But if you're not super rich, someone will record it and then put it on Audible and then you can listen to it at a later date. New new business venture. Hire us to come to our house and do a live dramatic reading of The Wheel of Time. <laughs> I was, I, I joked this to Clarus that after the Jordan Con, after we finish all of the books, mm -hmm. so like 2024 Jordan Con, I was joking that I should like set up a room at the convention and do a live dramatic reading of the entire final battle. Yeah. Because it's like nine hours. Yeah. And I was like, do you think that people would come watch me like live perform all nine hours of the final it's battle? It's like one of those like marathon like Japanese performances like yeah, yeah, that yeah. they used to do like hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. where it was like an all day event. I mean, those I think were like up to 48 hours sometimes, but like, I just think crazy. that like, I, if I cut it into like three sections with like a 30 minute break, I could give like an, uh, like a wild nine hour performance of the final battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nerdy does Tarman Gaiden. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that, that would be a lot of fun. Um, It'd be a lot of work. And who knows? I might record it and put it on audible. If you want a <laughs> free month of audible and a free audiobook on us, go to audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly. Mm -hmm. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly where you can listen to things that we call books. Correct. Back to the show that we didn't leave. Path of Daggers. <laughs> we are now halfway through Path of Daggers. We're a little bit over halfway, actually. And guess what? We finally, we finally... Got Rand! Got the main character Let's back. Let's go! Remember Rand? Do you guys do you guys remember Rand Althor? Kind of important to the oh, Wheel so, of Time. Do you remember Elias? <laughs> do you remember Elias? Elias just walked up. I know. Actually, Perrin... Perrin, I, I am, I'm, I'm going to say this now. Mm -hmm. Perrin is the most Tavirin person in these books. I thought you were going to say the main character, and the, I was like, well, correct. Yes, but Perrin is the most Tavirin in yes. that he finds people, he finds everybody. He finds Elias, and he finds more gays. He just finds just her on finds the side them. of the road, literally on the side of the road. <laughs> He's going to find Ship Captain. Oh, yes, he will. He will find, uh, I really hope Ship Captain's okay. Oh yeah, my god. I don't With know. With the Sanchin all over these waters, I'm like, I am Lenarvu. The thing is, though, he does have a Guinan with him, so maybe she, like, kind of had an inkling of what's up. She's like, I know how we can, like, avoid all mm -hmm. of that. Uh, there, there is a part of me that worries, or that doesn't worry because a Guinan's with him. I don't think that Robert Jordan would have set up a Guinan if she wasn't going to come back. Whereas, like, yeah. I could see Ship Captain never returning. If right. he was on his own. If he was by himself. Um, but because it's the two of them, and because of Nynaeve and Elaine... God, I have something in my... Uh, because of Elaine and Nynaeve's relationship with a Ganon, mm -hmm. um, I just don't see her being done yet. No, no, me neither. Um, and because Asuncion are such an important, and I feel like, huge villain in the show. Something in your eye? Yeah. I'm sorry, can I see? It's out now. I oh, okay, I was like, I could, I could poke your eye here on camera. <laughs> um, but before we get into the chapters, uh, we actually have one more uh, little segment that we do, which is that we read a review mm -hmm. from Apple Podcasts. If you want to drop a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, you can make me read anything, including this review from La What? <laughs> fun Wheel of Time podcast with two nerds. This is a fun read-through podcast, YouTube show, with two new readers. The fact that they're both new readers separates this podcast from many of the other great read-through podcasts and makes it really fun or extremely frustrating <laughs> to listen to them struggle through it all. I like the overall structure of the show, including their segments, including the smut corner and the highs and lows. The hosts, Nerdy and Clarus, are an entertaining, friendly couple and generally have great insights with some crazily accurate predictions and some majorly inaccurate ones, lol. <laughs> I know it's all in good fun, but I do feel like in his passion for the books, Nerdy can be a little bullying towards Clarus's ideas sometimes. <laughs> Just let her think what she thinks. This is a five-star show and you should give it a go. Beep, beep, boop, boo, will, boop, beep, boop. You're only mean to me because you do know I, I'm right. But do I bully you? No, you don't. I don't think I bully you. No. I think You're I just, argue with you. Yeah, you you know that I'm right. But like, I feel like for it to be bullying, you have to be like, no, your idea is dumb. And I don't think I ever call no. your ideas dumb. No, 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 never. Yeah. Like, I've never felt that way. Okay. Yeah. As long as you feel that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're good. <laughs> I'm worried. I don't want to be a bully. Big bully. Big, big bully. bully, big tall bully, tall bully, big tall bully boy. Um, not bully, just bulldozer. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Look, you guys, we will see who's right in the end. When Cad Swain is in the epilogue, and I'm right, you will all have to take that word bully and eat it. You'll have to swallow it whole and choke <laughs> on your 
aspirations. The funniest part is that, like, they all know. Well, most people here know how it all ends. That's true. They're probably like, oh, fuck, he is right. Damn. God damn it. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, leave a, leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you want us to read it. Mm -hmm. But for now, let's get into the... It's been 10 minutes, so I think it's time we actually talk about The Path of Daggers. <laughs> the Path of Daggers... <laughs> Chapter seven. Um, so we start on a hill. <laughs> I just, I saw the notes from like a weird angle and I thought the chapter title was called a Groupon. And I was like, Groupon, wow, bringing that back. Anyways, I'm I feel like fine. that was you just calling out my penmanship. Um, a goat pen. <laughs> I think I just had a moment. A it's fine. goat pen. Uh-huh. Uh, is chapter seven and mm -hmm. it starts on a hill with Perrin... Just looking at a city called Bethel, which is not Bethlehem. But I was like, every time I read so it, I was close. like, Bethlehem. Just keep going. God damn it. No, it's not Bethlehem. And he's uh, stuck between a uh, rock and a hard place um, because his wife wants to go talk to Aleandra, the queen of Gildan, mm -hmm. who I, I think is like a new queen of Gildan. Because I don't think yes. she was the queen that... Um, that uh, Loghain. Also, what what the fuck happened to Loghain? No, Where's he? So um, what happened? There was a there was a, a king, I believe, and um, Masima. Um, so she's like the newer queen mm -hmm. of of I think just probably like a few ish weeks. And she, the only reason she's still there is because she was like, yes, the dragon reborn, our lord and savior, whatever you say, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so Aleandra is um, chilling in this little town. And Perrin is trying to figure out which of the, his two ladies, one of whom is actually his lady, and the other, God, she wishes so she wants fucking that hard that so she was his bad. lady. So uh, bad. To send in. Also, the Aes Sedai are there, and they're like, but we are Aes Sedai. And mm -hmm. Perrin's like, gonna say something, and then the wise ones are like, shut up. And the Aes <laughs> are like, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Cool, 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 cool. You we do not speak in this Stop talking. <laughs> This whole um, wise one Aes Sedai dynamic is getting real complicated. Mm -hmm. Um... Like, and there's, and there's so many different, not like, not takes on it, but there's so many different, um, uh, perspectives we get to see it from. Yeah. Especially we get, we jump around a little bit more last week. We had like one perspective and this week we had, um, several, um, and we got to see uh, what, what, where the Aes Sedai are with different people and yeah. at different points in the story and oh boy, <clears throat> spicy. Um, yeah. So I, I, do you think that Perrin made the right call here? I mean, it worked. He chooses Berlaine. He sends Berlaine and Anura. Yeah. Do you think he made their call? If I were in his position, I I think I would have done the same thing. Thousand percent. I think Fayil is a terrible choice. I don't think she's a terrible choice, but terrible I choice. I think she's like she she would do fine. Fayil. If if I knew if Aleandra didn't immediately do what Fayil wanted, mm -hmm. she would kidnap her. Fayil is a terrible choice here. Fayil is making bad life decisions mm -hmm, at the moment. Mm -hmm. My favorite part, though, was the moment where Fayil is like, God, if Bear Lane wasn't after my husband, I think we might be friends. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah, they're like, they, they totally would have been. I think that Berlaine is 100% right here. And Berlaine crushes it. Yeah, she does exactly what she means to. I think the other very wrong choice would be to send in the Aes Sedai with the Wise Ones. And this is where the Aes Sedai and the Wise Ones... Mm -hmm. Someone needs to sit them down and be like, look, I appreciate this apprentice thing, but we need to keep up appearances a little bit if we're going to have use the power of the Aes Sedai relationship, right? And you can't have the wise ones treating the Aes Sedai that way in front of people you're trying to use the Aes Sedai to impress because it will confuse them and it will not draw them to your side. And if they're going to send in those mm -hmm. Aes Sedai and the wise ones like that, then they need to have the Aes Sedai be able to fake for the time being of that conflict. Mm -hmm. They need to have those Aes Sedai fake the old version of the Aes Sedai. Yeah. Because those people are going to be like, what is going on here? Yeah. What have you done to the Aes Sedai? This makes me uncomfortable. Yep. And you, that, and it's why sending Berlain with Anura, who is still a normal Aes Sedai in the eyes of everybody, right? Sending them in in that way mm -hmm. is the strongest play Perrin has. Yes. And I, I just, I don't think any of the options were real options. Also, well, and also that's why she's there. Yeah, I was going to say, Rand literally sent her there for that reason. Yeah. Um, I, I understand why Fael wanted to go, but Fael has all her own other plans going on, so she's fine. <laughs> she, she's, uh, she's something. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so yeah. Um, Berlaine heads off and Perrin goes into camp. And then um, if you're really interested in what every single bed in that camp is orientated towards, uh, you, you can read that. <laughs> In this section of the Wheel of Time, there was yeah. a point where I, we, we were like four pages into the like dis, it, description of Perrin's camp that I was like, I I started don't skimming. Care. I I started skimming. So if there's something really important in that bit, um, I missed it because um, I was like, hey, okay. It, 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 I like I was worried I was going to go to sleep. <laughs> like the and I, I usually like Robert Jordan's descriptive writing, mm -hmm. but this description of Perrin's camp. Especially just because it's characters that, like, we, we already know all of these people. Yeah. I was just like, I... I think it was... Can't. It was more interesting. <laughs> I think it was, like, the last book, where it was right after um, Dumais Wells. And Perrin was, like, smelling mm -hmm. out the, the anxiety and the rifts between people. Like, yeah. I thought that that was a more interesting version of that. And this, it was like... <laughs> well, and okay. but I think that what what was so interesting about the way that he did it in Crown of Swords was that he described the camp in relationship to the conflict between the different groups of people. Yeah, and so it, it became really interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And so because you were reading about the setups of the camp in relationship to how those different setups were in conflict with one another, you just get more invested in what's going on. Yep. But this version of it of like. Oh my god! I was like, I I yeah. I I don't care how many paces are between the I know, beds. I know. So uh, <laughs> I, and look, I I think the Path of Daggers is a very good book so far. I'm really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. This was the one sequence of this whole reading this week where I was like, move on, yeah. Robert. So far, I actually like this book better than book seven personally, but um. But, um, yeah, I, if your messages are being deleted in chat, guys, I, I know the slog is, like, a hot topic, but we're, we're going to try and avoid coming into this with this, like, preconceived notion of, oh, it's going to be such this and this and this and that. Um, what? So, we're just, we're, we're not, like, stuff about the slog, we're just, we're not, it's not going to be the same for us as it was for other people who... Like, I don't know. We've talked about the slog, though. I don't think it's fair to delete comments about the slog when we've talked about it. I thought we had, like, talked about, like, easing up on it because people were just... You and I have not had that conversation. I thought we had. Yeah. If you've had that conversation with the mods, that's news to me. No, I thought you and I had that conversation. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like we've brought it up enough, especially in relationship to, like, our experience against it. I, I feel like at this point the cat's already out of the bag on that one. Yeah, it's just one of those things where, like, every time we say something, we're like, oh, yeah, this part dragged a little bit. People are like, that's, it's this welcome to the slog. And that started happening in, like, book four. <laughs> to, to be fair, though, every time I bring up anything, people are like, yeah, but fireworks in a stone wall. That's that's just the YouTube chat. You can't control them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The YouTube frogs up in here. Yeah. They're, they're, they're monsters. The live they're viewers. Monsters. Lie, if you if you have the time to be watching our show at 11 a.m. on a Friday, uh -huh. monster. Monster. My How, favorite kind of monster. What the hell? We Lady appreciate. Gaga's monsters. <laughs> um, so uh, after we get a description of the entire camp layout, um, more gays shows up. <laughs> Um, there's like a, there's like a, I don't know, a ruckus, I guess what you call it. A ruckus. <laughs> there's a ruckus. And so uh, Perrin and his folks uh, ride over. Is, is a bunch of men trying to murder a woman and her friends a ruckus to you? Yeah. I think of a ruckus as like two guys fighting in a bar. Sure. Not. <laughs> so Perrin is riding along the highway and he finds a group of people being Lapping attacked in inside highway. of a goat pen. Yeah. And uh -huh. he is like, oh my god, I gotta go save those people. And uh, the the people with him are like, nah, it's too, don't worry about it. And he's like, no, I'm I gonna know. go save those people. Yeah. Um, Dragon Snacks, welcome back to the nerd table. Thank you. Uh, I think Jordan's prose was influenced by his time in the military in that there's a lot of slow downtime broken up with chaotic, fast action. Oh, absolutely. That's how yeah. there's 14 of these books. Um <laughs> Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It is tough to read some of it, though. <laughs> and so uh, the parent parent is like, look, I am not going to, I am not interested in hiding our party from Masima if it means leaving a woman to die. Yeah. Which, Chad Perrin, right? Chad Perrin. <laughs> Alpha Chad Perrin. And so wow. he rides over and he saves the day. Mm -hmm. And this woman is like, hi, um, my name's Megan. And I was like, isn't that the name? Megan? Is that how you read it? It's like Meg Hin. I. How did you read M-A-I-G-H-I-N? 
I don't know, but... Did you read it as Megan? Megan? <laughs> did I read it? Now I need to, like... Oh, no, wait, this is Elaine. Why are you... Why are you... It, it's spelled Megan. I don't know what to tell you. Me? Is it? Megan? I don't My know. My name's Megan. I don't know how I... Oh, no, Megden. No, yes. Oh, is it a D? Meg... 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 Megan. Oh, there is a D in there. Didn't see the D. Mahagadin. If you put the H and the D side by side like that, not going to see one of them. Yeah, that's fair. I was like, that. that's not. That's, yeah. All right. It's Megan because f I'm not fucking doing. Megadin. 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 I, it's, it's, the, yeah, sorry. Too. And I was like. I don't like it. In my brain, I was like, isn't that the name that, um, wasn't that the name of one of the people with, uh, Megidian? <laughs> When they first got to Salad Bar? You mean like one of, no, one of the two who became Aes Sedai? No, that's... Wasn't, um, don't, don't we already have a Meghan in this freaking series? I don't think so. I don't know. Now I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I was like, okay, Megan. Uh, oh, but there I is thought a it was Merrigan. Like, Merrigan. Mogidian yeah. was Merrigan. Okay, I was right. Yeah, 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 yeah. She yeah. was, yes. Her fake name was Merrigan. Those those are the same Which name. is very close to Megden. <laughs> Jesus. Well, because her because her name now is Mogidian with like two vowels taken out. <laughs> Basically, I Meghidin guess. Meghidin and Mogidian are not that far off. They're they're other. very close. No, you're right. Um, so my brain is having a hard time. So I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Perrin found Mogidian. <clears throat> <clears throat> And I was like freaking mad. out, right? Because I was like, oh my God, Perrin, like Mogidian is going to be in Perrin's camp now. And then Linny walks over and I was like, oh, it's fucking more gays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got there. You got there. Uh, but Zimian says the M names are getting bad as yes names. You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not mm -hmm, wrong. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for a second, I literally like freaked out thinking that Mogidian had like, that she had like organized this to get in with Perrin. Yeah. And I was like... Ooh, Linny. Okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we are right. We are right. But then I was like, why doesn't anyone with Perrin recognize Morghese? Well, who would? He's got a bunch of Two Rivers Anura? guys. Anura? An, uh, any of the Aes Sedai. Why would they know because what? Because Morghese trained with them. Yeah. But, <clears throat> like. Also, why wouldn't, like, Berlaine would probably have met her at some point. Morghese? They're both queens. The, 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 the chances that no one in that party of people would recognize the queen of Andor is a little bit silly to me. Really? I didn't notice it. Because, I, I like, Morghese was only at the tower for a very short amount of time, right? She doesn't have enough in, uh, of innate power to, to really be of use. And that was not very long ago when you compare, like, the Aes Sedai lives to, like... Sure, but there's only life. so many. There's only so many kingdoms that you that you. There are certain kingdoms you have to pass through to get anywhere in, out of Tarvalon, right? And Camelin yeah. is on that road. Is mm -hmm. one of the few roads from Tarvalon out, yeah. right? So the idea that all, like none of these I said I have ever met her is very strange to me. Well, the, here's the thing. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I think that uh, a lot of people's. Um, uh, we're we're influenced by how people look very often, right? It, uh, mm -hmm. th there have been like real instances of of people where if you carry yourself differently, if you're dressed differently, like people see more mm -hmm. gays as a queen, mm -hmm. and if they see her, maybe like she's a little roughed up, she's a little dirty, she's like not, she doesn't carry herself like a queen. Like people might, but be she like, is she carrying bears herself a like a queen. <laughs> Really? I, the, one of the first things she does in camp is go, No man puts a lady on the lion throne! Jesus, exactly like she that. Like, she goes like full queen ridiculous on Perrin immediately because everybody in the Wheel of Time is bad at stealth. Nobody <laughs> nobody in the Wheel of Time passes a stealth, stealth check Stealth does not ever. exist, no. Literally everyone Except fails the stealth Aiel. checks. No, no, no. The Aiel, stealth, everyone else. That's true. No, That's absolutely true. not ever. Yeah, stealth is a race uh, is a is a race trait in Wheel of Time. It's a race trait. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. When you're yeah. building your character and you pick an Aiel, that's the only time you can stealth missions. I don't know. There's just there was there was a part of this where I was like, Mor Morghese can't really like Morghese is too famous a person. Not really. Among Aes Sedai in particular to get away with this. Why is she famous among Aes Sedai? Because like she holds court with Aes Sedai, right? She has people an Aes Sedai pass, advise her. Yeah, but people pass through there. Like it's it just, it is, it is strange to me that. 
even they, this can't go on for very long. Like there, there is a point where Morgase will have met too many people if she stays with Perrin that should mm -hmm. have some idea of who she is. I think even if someone had like met her once a few years ago, like they may not like they, they may not recognize her in this like different not like form, but like. She's like a different this person different now. Form. I was like, it's not like she Transformers, doesn't transform. robots in disguise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. To me, it was <clears throat> it was perfectly believable because mm. people see what they want to see, right? I'm not saying it's not believable. Yeah. I'm just saying like, I was like, oh, of course, someone's going to recognize her because it's the freaking Queen of Andor. I think somebody will. And then yeah. everyone is like, oh, yeah, that's a girl. And I was like, oh, okay. Even Perrin's like, kind of looks like Elaine. It's just, it is, it's weird to me that she trained in the White Tower. Like, that makes it harder for me to buy that, like, she's going to meet people and they're all going to be like, no, no, no. But remember, her. like, more than half the Aes Sedai are not even at Parents the Tower. Parents never met Morghese, though. Yeah, true. Right? Yeah. So that, so. But most of the Aes Sedai have never met her either. I would say, I would argue like, it's not most. I would argue most Aes Sedai have probably met her. No, because if she, if less than half are in the Tower... Mm -hmm. Then the only people would have met her would have been some of her teachers at the tower for like the couple like months. Maybe she was there. She's been back though. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like it, it doesn't matter. I, we her, we yeah. need to move on because it was just. It doesn't matter. But like yeah. there, there just was a point of it. Where I was like, yeah, it's it's okay, cool. Yeah, I think someone will recognize her eventually. Like I think that that will be. That. I just feel like any time an I said I went to Andor, they would have stayed at the palace. Yeah, but Do you know what I mean? Like she was like a kid, right? No, no, no. I'm saying if, while she was queen, any time an Aes Sedai passed through Andor, that they would have stayed at the palace because yeah. Andor is very pro Aes Sedai and like would. But have... that's like maybe like twenty Aes Sedai out of a thousand. No, I think a lot of them pass through Andor. There's only yeah. so many ways to go from Tarvalon to anywhere in the west of Randland, right? Mm -hmm. So you end up in this position where, in order for any Aes Sedai to get anywhere, they kind of have to pass through Camelin unless they're going north or south. Because they're not going east, right? Very often. I guess. So the majority of Aes Sedai coming out of the White Tower are probably passing through Camelin at some point. Um, yeah, but they might try to, like, they may not stay at the palace, right? I'm, I'm not, look, it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying that it it, I, it was interesting. You thought someone was going to recognize the, her right The away. point was that it was interesting that no, none of these people who probably have met her, mm -hmm. or, or who have a good reason to have met her, haven't. I feel it's like... It's interesting that they've gathered so many people yeah. that, that you're like... Fayul might have met her. Like, well, I feel like maybe like a bunch of the Reds might have met her because Aleda was Red and Aleda was like her advisor. But like, we there's no other Reds around. Well, no, but that that kind of division among the Aes Sedai didn't exist for most of her rule. What makes you think that? Because it was about respectability. Like, like the the idea that any of the Aes Sedai would like Aleda twenty years ago uh -huh. would not have put a blue out. Because of how it would have looked. Like, she would have been treated a blue at the palace the same way that she would have read. Maybe not as personally, but, like, the idea of... Mm -hmm. uh, Aleda would not have been high enough up in the reds to have the ability to start a conflict like that by being disrespectful to another Aja. I don't think it's about starting a conflict. I think if that a blue was, like, passing through Camelin and was like, hmm, I guess I could go stay with Aleda. Or I could find a nice inn to go to. The, I no, I think that they no, I think that you go stay in the palace. Yeah, it uh, depends. I Perry think Wolf. if you want to be stealthy. Uh, Perry Wolf, Perry Wolf, thank you thank for the that super chat. chat. Uh, most of I, I said I would have ignored her in the tower because she was no more than a lowly novice. Yeah, like I think a handful no, of her teachers. She wasn't a lowly novice. She was the future queen of Andor. They don't give a shit they about that. They do. They cared with no. Elaine. We saw it with Only Elaine. Elaine got powerful. special treatment. Only because she was powerful. No, but it's also that there's an ex there. You, the Aes Sedai aren't dumb. They want to have that relationship with the Queen of Andor because Guys, they know the Aes Sedai aren't dumb. No, no, no. But 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 seriously, like they know the value of Andor being pro Aes Sedai, right? Yeah. There's no way there's no way that she did not get special treatment because the Aes Sedai were the Aes Sedai know in that position they are currying favor with the future ruler of Andor to ensure that Andor stays open to them. Because Amador isn't, right? And if they fuck that up, if they fuck up that relationship with Andor, that closes off their entire western border. I'm, a, I'm actually going to disagree with you there. I, I don't think she was treated any differently. And I think that the I said I want you to know who's in charge. You're here. You're on our turf. You are studying with us. Mm -hmm. I don't think that. I think they would have been harder on her, if anything. I don't know. 
I, I don't I, I don't think they would have. I, I feel like she's not... Pow- I think they knew she wasn't powerful enough. We need a new spring for Morghese's time at the tower. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, well, actually, isn't that new spring? I thought it was Aren't Morghese Moraine. and Moraine at the tower at the same time? Oh, maybe. I They're the don't know. same age, right? They're both in their 40s. Uh, yeah, probably. So actually, I think that might be... That, that might be what new spring is. That would be cool. All right. Um... <laughs> Uh, Shay says, was she already daughter heir when she was in the tower? I think not. That's actually an interesting point. I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, because she took the throne after. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Okay, I'm wrong. Yeah, I because I, I was thinking like the, the Aes Sedai would have been fighting to keep Andor pro Aes Sedai. But if she wasn't guaranteed to be queen, then like, no. I just feel like like 30 whatever plus years ago at that time, they were so cocky that they didn't feel like they needed to do anything to keep and or around. Maurice is like 36. How is Morghese 36? Because Elaine's like 20. So she had Elaine when she was... 16? Is that math? Do you not know how to detract 20 from 36? But if she was at the tower when she was 16... How? No, that doesn't work. She was at the tower when she was like 14. We'll figure it out. She was at the tower for like six months. Anyway, so Perrin finds Morghese... Uh, Perrin finds so for Morgan's. most of human history, women got pregnant very young. Yeah, but she had, she, but um, and there was the whole husband thing. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> th- yeah, weird. I thought she was old. I don't think either of us is on it right now. We're both we're both getting things very wrong. I can't do math uh, uh, before that's true. noon. Yeah. So give me twenty six <laughs> minutes, and uh, and then I'll be able to figure it out. Um, I, here's the thing. I'm impressed that you managed to come up with twenty six. Well okay. done. Well done. Time, <laughs> time I can do. Uh, Gawain uh, is a couple years older than Elaine. Yeah, because Gawain's not her... Oh, no, wait. Ga- yeah, because Gawain... Yeah. Is older. Yeah. Because Gawain And from a different several... husband, right? No, no, no. No, Gawain... Gawain? No, sorry. Right, right. Not Gawain. Ga- Galad... Gal- right, 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 right. Galad is different mother. Right, 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 right. Um, G- Gawain and Elaine are same parents. Don't you love trying to remember family tree stuff from six books ago? <laughs> yeah. Mm. But but importantly, Elaine and Rand are not first cousins. Thank God. <laughs> I'm so glad that they clarify that. Like, literally, like... <laughs> and that Rand, was, Rand took a whole chapter to be like, I just want to make sure. Mm-hmm. Um, before I bone lady number three... <laughs> I'm not related to her, right? We're just checking. It's yeah, it's fine. Anyways, where are we at the book? So we, what were we talking about? It's it's this this was a long conversation so about nothing. Morghese becomes Fayil's handmaiden. No, Meg Mechidin does. Me, Megdin. Mechdin. Yes. Yeah. Um, Elaine and Rand are not Targaryens. Thank God. Um, yes. That'd be hot. So though. I basically, love a Targaryen. yeah, Fayil is like swear service. To me, mm-hmm. and um, Morghese is like, yeah, sure, why not? As good a place as any, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've jumped, we've jumped ahead a little bit for that, but yeah, so we've sorry. lost, we've lost the plot of this show completely. Parent, no, parent, parent saves them. I don't think there's anything like super interesting in that. Um, um well, what, what's interesting about it is um, that Morghese's struggle to choose to go with them is really fascinating to me here. Um, you know what I mean? Like, she's, she, because initially she's, like, about to go off on her own. And, and Perrin just keeps sweetening the deal a little bit in terms of, like, taking care of her. And I think that she's realized, like, they don't have food. They don't have, yeah, yeah. you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And so I think that there's, like, um, there's something really cool to me about how the the relationship between these characters very slowly in this first chapter blooms into her trusting him enough to go back with him. Um, yes, her, she has, like, she is forming her own opinions about Perrin and mm-hmm. about Fael. Um, Hua, thank you so much. Welcome back to the nerd table. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Catch it up with three um, times speed. We'll see, we'll see when you catch up. Yeah, I think the, like, interpersonal stuff here is super interesting um, mm-hmm. because, you know, she's um, she's sussing them out, right? She, she wouldn't swear fealty to people that she thought were, like, monsters, right? Um, and so she is trying to understand what's happening here, and Perrin... Perrin finally drops the bomb that Rand is it wants Elaine on the throne. And I think, you know, more at first Morghese kind of takes that a certain way. Like, you don't put her on the throne. And 
I think she'll come to realize that it's more like I, I hope that by being close to Perrin that Morghese gets more pieces of the story mm-hmm. about what happened to her, you know, like because she doesn't even really understand yeah. that a Forsaken like manipulated and compulsed and raped her, right? Like yeah. she I, I don't think she fully understands that. She kind of like half blames herself because she believes her like feelings were her feelings. Um, and so I, I hope that, like, through Perrin and through Fael, that she's able to, like, put that together and, um, mm-hmm. I, I think, like, forgive herself. Like, I, I think that she, she carries a, a, a weight. I feel like she's more aware that it was magic, though, than, because she doesn't remember a lot of it, right? Yeah. Like, her, she doesn't have the memories of her actions, so I think that, I don't, I'm, I don't think that she's not aware that there was something hinky going on as Velma Dinkles would say. Uh, here's something What's in Velma's the... last name? Dinkley. Dinkley, not I... Dinkles. Yeah, no. You're... I was so close. Um, it's it, it. I don't know because in the last book, Morghese was saying like, you know, how could I like cloud my judgment and get like feel this way? Let a man like make me do things I didn't want to do. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't know if she really like 100 percent gets it because we haven't. We haven't seen that realization yet, and so mm-hmm. I, I hope that it, I hope that it is, um, I hope that it is coming maybe in this book sometime. But I think that her and Fael are gonna have an interesting relationship, um, especially with Linny being like, "Remember your place." Linny's Linny's having fun. Lin- yeah. Uh, before they the best. Before they ride back to camp, though. Uh, oh, um, tell thank you. Welcome to the nerd table. Tell Mar, thank you for joining the nerds. Thank you. Uh, before they ride back to camp, parents like, yo. Basil? And Basil's like, hi. He's like, oh, shit. Uh, And so we get to chapter eight. A simple country woman uh, where Perrin rides back into his camp and he, you know, we already talked about how much we learn about everything. Uh Uh, And they get to his tent and he's like, all right, ladies, go wash yourselves. Men, let's go wash ourselves with Linny, I guess, who goes with the men for some reason. Um, uh, And she's like, He's like, Basil, tell me your story. And then he's like, yes, tell him the truth and nothing but the truth. No fast. truth. No ornamentation. He is a man who wants to know only the facts. Do not say any more than you need to. I'm not being sus right now. I know. And parents like. I was like, that was weird, but okay. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Who the fuck is that woman? B- Basil? And Basil uh, lies. Just that's straight up lies. Uh, yeah. I mean, nobody saw that coming. Yeah, but, like, um, not a good lie. Yeah. Because, like, why would an innkeeper go negotiate trade in another country? Like, it doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. Let me just leave the... You know what? There are people who do this professionally, but I'm going to leave my inn for a few days to go ride into a war zone so that I can try and get wine? Yeah. It's, it's not the best story. And, you know, I think that Perrin is kind of like... All right, sure, sure. Perry Wolf, thank you for that super chat. Perry, thank you. Uh, just take a moment to appreciate Clara's bought that chair for Nair's birthday, but uses it full time. It does suit her coloring better, though. Uh, it's so I. <clears throat> it's fine. She bought me a better chair for Christmas. I did. Side tangent: this is like a size larger than this chair, yeah. and so this one actually ended up being more comfortable for me. Um, and so I have the Aquaman chair, and you have the Game of Thrones. Yeah, chair. She, this the, 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 the Game of Thrones chair is too big for her. So yes, I have little legs. But she bought me a Lazy Boy recliner for Christmas, so I'm very happy. I won Christmas this year, guys. Yeah, because I have no idea what I'm. I have no idea what I'm going to get you. Like I literally, have, I'm so screwed. Um, yeah. But I also like. I'm like, do, we don't need me to spend as much. As you spent on me, so no, like, uh, I don't know what we're gonna do. No, we're fine. <clears throat> we'll figure something out in our life. Um, but yeah, so uh, Basil Gill tells a terrible story. Um, uh-huh. but I, it, but it's like fine enough, and I think that like this is residual trust from him having housed Perrin in the past. I was gonna say, I think Perrin is focusing on the goodwill that he has with <clears throat> Basil Gill, right? Like, <clears throat> he doesn't think that Basil's trying to like pull one over on him, you know. I'm yeah. sure he's like, you know what, the dude's got his own reasons, and he helped me, he helped Rand, he did a lot, so I'm just gonna be like, sure, okay, and keep him safe, you know, yeah. just be a be a good friend. Yeah, and so Linny butts in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's, let's cut the shit. Marry those two. And parents like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who the fuck is this woman? Yeah. But, but Linny, Linny's grand plan is that um, Perrin go grab uh, Megden, sorry, Megden, 
and Talonvor and just like force them to be married because I, that's what they want. That's don't yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not weird at all. She's like, your, your boy Masima's doing this. Why don't you do it too? Oh my god. The second one protects the rest. Thank you for that super chat. I'm behind a little. You're assuming no one recognized Morghese. Oh, I think somebody that's will. What it's, that's what the book said, so it's not an assumption. Um, <laughs> somebody will, for sure. But um, yeah, I, parents never met the queen. He's like, eh, sure, Megan, whatever your name is. I, I think that that version of... <laughs> That, like, oh, you assumed that something that wasn't said didn't happen is you can't read like that because then nothing that you read matters. Like, it's fun to have the occasion. Just because you said so. Yeah. Like. You, I, I, and I think that authors have to be careful with that, right? Because yeah, yeah. if you set up, if you have too many times in your book where what is explicitly said is then a, it's always a twist. Just kidding. Then yeah. it's hard to invest in the reading as you're going, and then you become only invested in twists. I think that yeah. this is a problem that plagued M. Night Shyamalan for like a while in the middle of his career, where he had such a, excellent twists at the beginning of his career with Sixth Sense and, and things like that, yeah. that people began to like assume that it was coming. And so it, it actually made it harder for him to make like movies with twists. Totally. Because the assumption of the incoming twist it just inherently took away from it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the same thing is happening right now with Marvel movies and cameos, mm -hmm. where the assumption that there's going to be cameos is taking away the weight of those cameos. Yeah. Or with what just happened with Black Adam, I, I won't say what, in case you haven't seen it, but um, of the the public reveal of the cameo before the movie even premiered, yeah, yeah, took yeah. away from that moment. And so I, I think that like if someone recognized her, that will be a cool reveal later, but I'm not in the moment reading it going, I bet everyone is lying because it... <laughs> Because that I, I feel like that almost takes away my future experience. Yeah, because then you you miss out on the like aha moment of it, right? Yeah. Like if if you're if, if you're reading it and you're like, no, they probably are. This is all a, a lie, and it's going to be different later. Then you you lose a little bit from that moment of being like, oh, cool. So I you, yeah, I try I try not to read things like that where I'm like, no, they're telling me wrong information or they're misleading me and I try to just let it like take me on that journey because then the reveals are more fun. I also think that Robert Jordan doesn't write like that, right? I think that mm -hmm. Robert Jordan typically will leave a trail of breadcrumbs to what he wants you to think. Yeah. Um and he that trail of breadcrumbs will mislead you sometimes, but it's very intentional. Yeah. Um Yeah, he's I don't know. he's 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 good at that kind of thing. Um yeah. 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 One of I I think I think it's one of his strengths in the books. If, if someone in the camp recognized her, though, I don't know what the purpose of lying about it would have been. Well, I don't think I don't think anything was like lied about. I just think it's going to be someone that we didn't have a perspective of, so that we know that they recognize. Just her or some not. some new S name character. <laughs> a new S name, yeah. Honestly, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I feel like that there that is going to be a plot point at some point. Um, oh, I just for sure, don't yeah, think yeah. it's Perrin. You know, like I don't think Perrin or Fayol recognized I would, her. Fucking love if it's Fayil. I would love if Fayil like if, if we get like a chapter in like Fayil's like ah, the queen of Andor. No, 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 but they like know each other. Like Fayil met her when she was a really young girl, and Morghese was like a, just oh the worst God. to her, yeah. like super disrespectful to her. And so Fayil meets Morghese later and is like, "I'm gonna make your life hell for what mm -hmm. you did to me when I was six years old." That is the level of petty that I think Fayil would pull off. And I, I do I do like that quite a bit. I, I hope I would if the only person that I think it would yeah. be fun is if it's Fayol. Anyone else? Mm, whatever it doesn't really mean anything. No, that that would be funny. Oh my god, pay yeah, Fayol would. Um, so. <laughs> Joe Chio says Robert Jordan literally writes the eye movements of every goddamn noble in details. Well, and that's why I think that goes yep. into why Perrin trusts ba Basil Gill is that he knows he's lying because he can smell it on him, which is just so fucking weird. It's so weird. The things that Perrin can smell are so fucking weird. I know. Um, it's so weird. Yeah. Because he's like, she smelled like she was worried about her son who might have died in the war six months ago. And you're like, what well, the okay. fuck does that smell okay. like? All right, not, not quite like that. No, but, but sometimes it almost is. <laughs> almost, almost, yeah. And you're like, what, what does, what, how could that have a smell? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Here, here, here's the thing. You, I, you can smell scared, right? Yeah. Like, we, we've shown that animals can smell fear. Yeah. Because, uh, like, you... Your heart starts beating faster, and so you let off more pheromones or whatever. There's like a there's like a chemical reaction to that. Yeah, and that's kind of it. Like they're, they're like, <laughs> Perrin's nose can smell it's magic. the weirdest shit. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> Fael's horny. Like, <laughs> but, 
but but it gets into like it it's not even like oh, God. it's not cool anymore to me. I actually just laugh every time. Like I'm like, mm. that's dumb. Because it's and it's, I wish I didn't. I, I did. I wish I didn't think that Perrin's nose was a little dumb. It, yeah. It sometimes it is taken like a half a step too far, and you're like, yeah, okay, you wow, that's very insightful. And like I said, I think it would be more interesting if every other character couldn't read every other character's face in mm -hmm. in an instant, right? She's definitely hiding something about this. Her eye flickered this direction, and I wonder if she's thinking about this. I'm like, how? Can you know that? Mm. Like, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, I, that's the thing is I wish that everybody else was just a little worse at reading people to make Perrin's thing more interesting. You know what I mean? Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I think it's, but, but also like sometimes I, I wish I had examples because there are sometimes like some, th some things like fear, like big emotions. Mm -hmm. I can understand how he can smell them. Yeah. But, like, there, there's sometimes the, like... The, the jealousy? I don't know how you smell jealousy. It's sharp. <laughs> it's very sharp. It's like an aged cheddar. Yeah, it's some cheese. Um, fuck, I, I, I wish I had... Scratch and sniff wheel of time. Oh, my God, can we make a parent greeting card that's a scratch and sniff for different emotions? <laughs> uh, I would love that. Um, oh, my God. Kvoth, Kvoth, I'm Kvoth, sorry. Kvoth, Pendrag, thank you so much for that super chat. <laughs> what the hell, nerdy? How do you have the same beanie as me? I don't know what you're talking about. What I thought I had a unique one of a kind one. Hope the move went well. It, it, it went what, really well. What beanie? I don't know what I beanie you're talking about. I don't know what beanie you're talking There's about. There's no no beanies here. Yeah. No, no hats. We don't we don't wear that. Um, thank you for the super chat, though. Um, so, yeah, so Fael basically swears Morgase into her service, and mm -hmm. so Morgase kind of... Speaks for the rest of them and is like, well, yeah, I'm sure we'll all stick around. And then we find out. How about this one? Oh, you found She out. also smelled determined. Like, you can't. That's not I a wanna, smell. I want to know what it smells like. Be because it's not an emotion, right? Yeah. Like, it's it's not a. It, it just gets. Yeah. That, that, like, words like deter. You can't smell determined. You can smell angry, right? Like, you could. Because that changes something about you. You can smell happy because it changes something about like your pH and whatever. Like there, there's stuff like that. The, mm -hmm. there, there, it's just like there's these two sides of it yeah. that like it gets to the point where like Perrin's nose is so ridiculously good at smelling yeah. that it becomes, I laugh. Like I'm like, okay. oh, I think this is meant to be comedy. What if, what if we know that the wolves have this kind of telepathy thing going on, right? Sure. What if Perrin has, like, very minimal telepathy with the people that he's around and he thinks it's, like, a smell? And it's, like, translated, like... No, because he, because if the wind is blowing in the wrong direction, he doesn't... So his telepathy is wind-based? Yes. Like... I'm trying. <laughs> <clears throat> Why not? Why not? Oh, my God, we could make candles that are different Fail emotions. <laughs> Determined by the nerdy night. By the Abaras. <laughs> uh, Jealous by Chafail. Narandon says there are colors humans can't see that other animals can. It's not going too far. Okay. <laughs> you can... That is a, that, the light spectrum. That, that is, is not that yeah. is not the same thing at all. Because those lights exist regardless of how a person feels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're trying to say, but they're they're ve they work very differently. It's magic. It doesn't really matter. It is just kind of funny sometimes to be like when Perrin can smell the. <laughs> I I think that it would work. Here's the thing. I think that it would work for me mm -hmm. if it was like there were like five things that he could smell, and he took that plus their facial expressions or whatever yeah. to interpret determined. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. It, it, but he, his nose is so specific that I think it's funny. Right. But like if he if, if he like said, smelled like, like step angry far. and she looked and putting together the smell with this, I feel like she's determined. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that to me would that to me would make a little bit more sense. Yeah. But but it's just how specific he gets mm -hmm. that it just is weird to me and it makes me laugh. That's yeah. All. Yeah. 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 I I I think it's like a fun thing, but it definitely like doesn't make. Um, and also, he's wrong so often that I don't know why he's so confident. I know. 
Uh, anyways, um, we're, at, we're 45, nine minutes in and we're still in the sex. Guys, this many, is the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. How many tangents? Y'all ready for the long haul? We're in a new house that doesn't smell like smoke anymore. So these, these shows might be four or five hours. You don't know. You don't know. Oh, shit. Well, all right. No, they're not. Uh, <laughs> I, I will get too hungry. I, that's fair. We do need to, well, you know, we'll take a snack break in the middle of book club. Mm-hmm. Um, we probably will need to do that for the finale. Oh, yeah. Like, well, I think we're just going to break the finale up into weeks. <laughs> I think the final book is going to take us like three months to get through. Pot- yeah, potentially. Well, you know, we'll figure that out when we get there. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, so Fahil. Fahil. Uh, she's, uh, she's up to her own shenanigans, we find out. Not in this chapter. I- isn't that in chapter eight? Oh, yeah, it is. Isn't that, like, the second half of chapter eight? Nope, you're right. Okay. So, Fahil sneaks out of bed. Yeah. Um, carefully, because Perrin's ears are also uh, crazy. Are, are annoying um, sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, she sneaks out, <laughs> and she walks past, uh, Mechden and her friends, and is like, ah, don't worry about me. Mm-hmm. And she goes, and she meets Cha Fahil. Yeah, f- 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 Falcon's Claw? Falcon's Talon, I Talon. think, or something like That's, that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, she has her own Aiel society. I say that in quotations because they're not Aiel, they're Kyrian. I think that Bane and Chad are going to spank the shit out of her for this at, at some Fahil? point. Oh I my god. I hope so. Oh my god, can we and get she a has, like She's come up with her own version of hand talk. Like, if yeah. Bane and Chad find out about this, I think they're going to be pissed. She's like, bastardize American Sign Language. And I'm like, uh, okay, sure. <laughs> Fahil is the guy at Nelson Mandela's uh, funeral who did not speak sign language and was just faking it. That's a thing? Have you not seen this? No, I did not know that that was a thing. Yeah, the <laughs> the guy, the I, it was Nelson Mandela's funeral, right, chat? Am I getting the... I'm pretty sure it was his funeral. I'm not sure. Um, um, somebody will probably let us know. Yeah, I'm waiting comments. for someone in chat to confirm. But yeah, so it yeah. was like internationally televised, right? Because he was a huge figure. And the the guy doing the sign language straight up did not know how to do sign language. How did he and get he, that job? Like, people were so upset. Yeah, obviously. Uh, and right, obviously. Right, 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 the way I said that made it think like it wasn't. No, no, but like truly so upset. And Holy shit, I did not know this. And it's like, it's the, it's not, it, cause it's not like it was like a cheap event. It's not like they didn't have money to get the best sign. I, I bet the best sign interpreter on the planet would have done it for free because of how much that man meant, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the idea that they found someone who was Some literally like not alley, capable. Like, yeah. It's, it's I know one of the language. wildest, it's one of the wildest That's stories crazy. ever. Yeah. And like, how the fuck does that guy not think he's going to get caught? I, like, it's televised know. everywhere on the planet. It yeah. was one of the craziest things that's ever happened. Wow, that's... That, that wasn't, like, also awful, right? Yeah, yeah, that's... Wow. Anyways. Yeah. Um, I mean, I it want, was awful. Oh, I, I shouldn't say that. It is pretty awful, but... It, yeah, that's that's taking... That's too I far. was about to say nobody died, but... <laughs> it, was it was a funeral. funeral. You are the worst. Um, yeah, so I really uh, would like a threesome between Fahil and Fahil. <laughs> 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 How did you make this transition? I just did it. Nelson Mandela's funeral. To, I really want a threesome. Yeah, with uh, Bane and Chiad and uh, Fayil. That would. Um, I hope Robert Jordan answers my prayers, but I, don't, I doubt that that will happen. Maybe, maybe there's a uh, maybe there's um, some fan smut that I can go find. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Fayil's gonna get in a lot of trouble for her Aiel society. <laughs> Um, I'm just, I'm just waiting for it to, like, explode in her face. Here's the thing, it's not a bad idea. I actually think that, like, her having her own kind of, like, network of spies, like, (laughs) nice idea. Are you okay? No. We were talking about Nelson Mandela's funeral. And you followed that up with, I would like a threesome. (laughs) Yeah, that's how you transition. You stop talking about one thing and you start talking about another thing. We're going to hell. professional podcast. <clears throat> we are we are straight up going to hell. Uh huh. I mean, we are because you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> There's <clears throat> many reasons for that. Um, That's where all the queers go to the fires down below. God, hell is going to be such a fun party. I know. I know. I'm so oh excited. Oh my god, it's going to be great. So rainbow. Um, oh so- my god, <laughs> guys, that that crushed me. I'm so sorry. That I'm like so. 
I'm lost. What were we talking about? What so, what what is the show? Fayil has her own society, right? And Cha she's, she's got her like network of spies that are like they're like sworn fealty to like her and her alone. And she's like not working to like undermine Perrin, but she is working behind Perrin's back to like further his goals without him knowing about it. Um, so that's not going to have any repercussions whatsoever in the next <laughs> seven, seven books. Um, <laughs> it's not noon yet. It's Don't not do noon. math. I have two you have two, you have two have more minutes two more before minutes. you have to so do sorry. math. Um, uh, no, I, I like her having her own little society. I think it's kind of. Um, I, I liked the idea that Perrin allows it because. Allows it? Yeah. He doesn't know about it. Yeah, he does. Because, like, two chapters from now, Perrin has this whole, like, inner monologue where he's like, uh, it's best not to try and. Or it's best not to let your wife know that you're. Uh, trying to learn her secrets and even more so not to tell her the ones that you've already learned. Oh, okay. And I, I think Perrin a thousand percent knows what's going on here. He allows it because he thinks that her having this like shield wall around her will protect her. Mm. And so he's like, whatever I need to do to have her surround herself with people who would die for her <laughs> to keep her safe, I'll do because it's not really getting in the way of my shit as much as she thinks it is. That's fair. I, I, I 1,000% think that he knows. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, that did not occur to me, but you you know what? You're probably right. Yeah. I uh, I, I agree with Threk. He, he's missing some details, but mostly he knows. He yeah. does not know that she sent people to kidnap Alejandra, which no. like, Fahil, well, how the fuck did you think that was going to go? Hey, it didn't happen, so it's fine. <laughs> it's fine because it didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. This book would have been more interesting if it did, though. <laughs> Can you imagine if Chafail shows back up and they kidnapped Alejandra and Berlain? God. And Fayil gets to carry Berlain like on a spit Ewok style tied hands and ankles. Oh my god. Um uh, and so yeah, they 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 smell like Sullivan a society. Farm girls. Oh my god. Uh, I can smell that Fayil has about 30 to 40 people working for her. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you can't smell the context of a book, the best thing that you can go to is audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly to hear the contents of the book. Because uh, we're not all parent. We don't have his nose. We can't sniff a book and know all the secrets inside. But if you go to Audible, uh, Rosamund Pike will read Eye of the World to you uh, with that very, very um, I just got spoiled. sexy voice that she has. I just smelled the book and it spoiled it for me. Are you... Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you a wolf brother? I am. I don't smell good that often. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I My farts are not pleasant. That's, well, mo most of the time they're fine, but then sometimes they're Sometimes just, they're bad. They're real bad. Sometimes they're mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> wow, today is The funny wild. thing is, new, that new book smell really does make you have to poop, though. You know what I mean? Chat knows what I mean. You no. go into a bookstore, suddenly you gotta poop. It's like a thing. Uh, you, you know what? We could solve your problems by putting... We should take you to bookstores more often. You know, it doesn't work like that for me, but I appreciate the effort. I, I'm not the only one who feels this way, right? Uh, no, nobody. nobody. You go into a bookstore and you smell that, like, new book smell... And are you sure it like, makes the, you have to poop. Are you sure it's not the Starbucks that's in the chapter? No, no, no. I, I swear. This is a thing. It's for, yeah, no. Saldean Farm Girl agrees with me. Mm. It is 1,000% a thing. That, the like, the books, the books in a bookstore make you have to poop. It's a, it's a, it is, you can look it up. It is a thing. Um. No, <laughs> you just made that up. I'm worried. I'm worried that. James Ross says, this is a known phenomenon and we don't know why yet. This is a, I, I swear to God, this is a thing. <laughs> I am not the only person who feels this way. No, I Bookstore I think... poop is absolutely a thing. I uh, there's enough people in chat I don't feel alone. Hey uh wow. Okay. I... I I don't think it's for everybody, but there are there are people like me who mm -hmm. if you go to a bookstore and you're like like on the verge, if you're a woman on the verge of a nervous breakdown, you go to a bookstore, you'll have a poop. It's great. Wow, I, guys. Marco, I don't really have a story to share. Book club is very informative. The chapters that I go to, that I used to go to growing up a lot, had a really great bathroom. So, like, I would... So there was no problem. I would go to Chinook Mall. 
I would go to chapters. I would go take a poop. I would like walk around for five minutes. I'd poop You're and then like, I'd get a coffee and then I'd walk them all. So you just conditioned yourself to poop in bookstores. That's why. No, this is a thing. This is 1,000% a thing. Uh, Glenn Peterson, thank you for that super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Haven't caught you guys live in a while. Glad you're in the new digs. One main complaint I have with the slog is that these books are so much shorter than the previous books. A sip of Wheel of Time mm. to your weight. That's fair. That, that, yeah, that is fair. This one for sure definitely feels shorter. Uh, Narishma, thank you for joining the Nars. Thank you. Welcome back for six what? months. I, I don't know. A narcissist, um, thank you for that super chat. Uh, jazz to be able to watch live for Welcome once. Welcome on into well, the thank you for live. being live. For being Sorry, here. you're you're on the live where we are getting through nothing in the books. We're just chatting. Yeah, I have no idea what that was. Well, let's move on. Ember Eyes says there's a Sawbones episode about it. A Sawbones? Yeah. What's a Sawbones? It's a show, I'm assuming. I don't know. Okay. I, okay. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. All right. Moving on. Let's get to chapter nine. <laughs> What's 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 chapter nine? Let's um, no, we we're not done here yet because there's another point of view at the end of this chapter. Oh, Morgase. Yeah, we get to You're Morgase. Right. Morgase is like lying in her little cot, and she's like, "That file's a weird one." And then Talonvor comes over and is like, "Tell me to leave," and she's like, "And he's like, fine, I'm gonna kiss you." And then she kisses, and they make out hard, and then she's like, "Oh my god, it was so hot." And then she's lying in her bed, she's like, "Oh my god, I can just feel his lips on my eyelids. I'm so horny right now. I need." parent to come force me to marry him <laughs> that took a weird fucking turn um, these books have taken a weird turn they don't make out he kisses her eyelids i know but i in my head it was steamier than that and then Fair. he was watching just like you know she was like she's like i haven't been wet in 84 years Jesus christ fudgy thank you for the super chat um mariko aoki performing phenomena is the technical name of a bookstore poop no way, there's a name for it. There's a fucking name for it. I, I knew this was a thing. I've never heard this before. I'm gonna have, okay. Are you gonna look at, fine, fine, whatever. Um, yes, yeah, so Morgais, um can't tell Talonvor to leave because she hearts him and he hearts her and um, they're definitely gonna get married, but. <laughs> the Mariko Aoki phenomenon is a Japanese expression referring to a sudden urge to defecate that is felt upon entering bookstores. The phenomenon is named after Mariko Aoki, a woman who described the effect in a magazine article published in 1985. Well, you heard it here, folks. McGill University, a very professional institution, has an article titled The Unbearable Poopness of Bookstores. <laughs> I don't think I've ever pooped in a bookstore. Like, I don't... These are scientific journals who have talked about this. IFL Science has one. Yeah, this is a thing. This is a, It's a thing. I'm fucking right. I nailed it yet again. Clarice, you don't poop anywhere. Yeah, I don't poop. Um, all right. It's unfortunate. <laughs> um, uh, the only thing we're kind of jumping over is uh, Morgase does have her moment where she's like... We are, you don't put, a man doesn't put a woman on the Iron Throne, the Lion Throne. The Iron Throne. The Iron Throne. throne. Uh, and everyone's like, yo, calm down, girl. Rand is the Dragon Reborn. He does shit different. He does shit different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, There's not, there wasn't much to, like, get into about that. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, that's fair. This it was is, cool. I, I like that Margase is incapable of not being a queen. <laughs> because, no, no, but but seriously, like, yeah. I, I sometimes rag on characters. Like, I ragged on Nynaeve and Elaine for all of book four for not being good at being spies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were supposed to be totally spies, and they weren't. They were not totally um, spies. But, Mor but Morgase is different, right? Because Morgase is, Morgase has only lived one way. Yeah. And she hasn't been given a mission the way that Nynaeve and Elaine were. Like, Nynaeve and Elaine knew they what they were sent out to do. Yeah, yeah. Morgase is in a different position where she's trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that that is a much harder place to be in because it's this isn't something that she's willingly doing. It's not something yeah. that she feels called to yeah, the way that yeah. Elaine and Nynaeve did. Yeah. It's something that she feels like resigned to yeah and she's like never gone incognito before rather yeah rather than feeling a sense of success around where, where she's headed which i which is what i was struggling with Nynaeve and elaine about with morgase she's really struggling to she's rebelling against this situation she's being forced into and i actually find it fascinating i i feel so awful for her because you know her her life is pure tragedy at this point right like well as far yeah. as she's concerned like her country is in the hands of a crazy man. Yeah. Who, uh, her, she was violently assaulted yeah. by two different men. Yeah. Um, she's had her memories taken. She's had her life taken from her. She yeah. just found out that her daughter's alive. 
And so like, you know, there, there's, yeah. her, her life is really this incredible tragedy. And I just, I, I feel so much empathy and sympathy for her. And I think she's a, re- a rather remarkable character. And so mm-hmm. these rebellions of, of appearing as she once did, it's so hard to unlearn that lifetime of training. Yeah. And I just think it's really, I, I think she's fascinating. I'm so glad Morgase is selling these books because I actually really enjoyed everything w- around her. Me too. I hope that she does, like I said, I don't think she makes it till the end of the series, unfortunately, but I do hope that she at least has some moments of happiness and joy before uh, Tarman Gaiden. <laughs> Because she deserves it, and she's she's really well written. Um, I just hope her and Talon were, you know, bone find down. A, find a finally, new glue, you know what I mean? Yeah, Glenn Peterson, thank you for that super chat. The new car smell used to set off my poop reflex. Then I got old. Fair. I can't relate, but sure. That, my, oh my god! Wait, can I tell a quick story? So Go my dad, uh, this is years ago. Um, my my first stepdad, uh, he we we got this new dog, and so her, her name was Zoe. And I loved Zoe. Zoe was the fucking best. Um, we actually got Zoe. My grandfather bought us Zoe for Christmas. Uh, and then my stepdad, who was a police officer, my first stepdad, not my current stepdad, uh, he was a police officer and he took Zoe to the vet. Yeah. And they found out that uh, the police were called by the vet because Zoe had been stolen and my grandfather had bought Zoe on the side of the road from like a truck that had stolen it from Petland. And so my stepdad, we had already fallen in love with the dog. So my stepdad had to buy the dog again that we had gotten for Christmas so that we could keep her. Yeah. But anyway, so my dad comes to pick me up for Christmas and we like Zoe's brand new and very excited puppy. And Zoe ran outside into my dad's brand new car and pissed on the um, passenger side seat. And it was like the first thing Zoe did in our lives. And from that moment on, I just, I love that dog. <laughs> So much. From that I was moment like, on, like Zoe's the real MVP. It here. was. It was like yeah. it's one of those moments that's like such a high point in my life that I, I, no matter what, will never forget it. Right. That will be the last memory dementia takes for me. In <laughs> old age. Oh my god. Um, Rand Tomar, thank you for joining the Narks. Rand, thank you. Welcome to the Nerd Table. And Dale Hendrickson, if you take a book into the bathroom, you must buy it. It is now tainted, much like your toothbrushes are all tainted with poop. Wow, you had to go there. We have so many bathrooms. We could have a toothbrushing bathroom, and well, actually, no. Our, we, uh, that is what we've done. We do. We have two. We have we have two and a half bathrooms now. So there is a separate pooping bathroom that yeah. our toothbrushes do not live in. Nobody. Um, uh, the the rule in our new house is that nobody poops on the top floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dale, thank you for that super chat. I'm so sorry we've talked about poop so much today, y'all. If if that's if that's a turnoff, I, yeah. I I really am sorry. I really was not expecting that, but yet uh, here we are. Yeah. Um. Now we're moving on to chapter nine. Yes. Now we're yes. moving on to chapter nine. There we go. Tangles. Perrin uh, inspects the camp, and he's he's trucking along. He knows he has to go talk to the Aes Sedai because, mm-hmm. or to the wise ones, because they're maybe beating the Aes Sedai, which he's uncomfortable with. Uh, and so he's like trucking along, and he's passing through the Meander camp, and they're all like looking at him, and they're like, "Why are you here?" Mm-hmm. Oh, and you're not saying anything, and it gets weird. And then he gets to the edge of the camp, and he's like, "You Mayaners are, uh, you guys, are pretty great." And Good the manners are like, yeah, <laughs> let's go. Uh, he said we're awesome. We are the best. Perrin, Perrin, golden eyes, golden eyes, golden eyes. Manners are golden eyes. Manners are golden eyes. And Perrin's like, fuck, Berlaine's going to be pissed at me. Because yeah. I said like four words and these boys are now, they'll follow me to the ends of the earth. They will follow you into the dark. Perrin, Perrin, if Perrin compliments you in the slightest, you follow that man for the rest of your life. Like, it is so funny to me how, like, he said that Fayol was cute, and she's yeah. like, I'm marrying him. He said that Berlaine yeah. was cute. Berlaine's like, I am going to hunt this man to the ends of the earth so that I can ride him like a disco stick. <laughs> she, he said, like, one nice thing to the people of Emmonsfield, and they're like, we changed your nappies when you were a boy, but now you are our god, Perrin. Yeah, this whole, like, Taviran thing, it works really well. Perrin is going to accidentally turn all of Ranland into men Manethrin, just by saying nice things around the country. Yeah, yeah. Guys, Manethrin is coming back. All the, the, Rand's real plan should just send Perrin to the Sanchen and, like, compliment their helmets. And then he and would the be Sanchen king of the Sanchen. Like, it's Arthur Hawkwing reincarnated. Oh Thank you. Oh, my God. Everybody, yeah. like, the dick riding of Perrin in this is awesome because I love him as a character. <laughs> but it is just, it's so funny how hard they're like, Perrin, gold knight, gold knight. He said a compliment. Literally. 
Yeah. Like, uh, they, like, lose their shit. The one thing that I um we didn't mention was that um uh, Perrin lets the Manethrin banner keep flying. Oh, um, yeah, he gets talked into it. Yeah, they're yeah. like, hey, here's the thing. Fael talks him into it. Fael and I think it's Anora, the Aes Sedai. Yeah. I think they're like, hey, if you make it seem like you're here to, like, bring Manethrin back, that is a way smaller problem than everything else that's going on. And, like, people no will assume gonna... that's the only thing you're doing. Yeah, people yeah. are people people will leave you alone because they're like, ah, they don't have to deal with that guy. Smart. So smart. Mm -hmm. And and it's going to inadvertently bring back Manethrin. Well, it um, already has, right? Well, yeah, yeah, Like, well, by the end of the reading, like, we're going to get there. Like, Manethrin yeah. kind of exists now because he's the lord of the two rivers and he's the lord of... I Oh, we, we jumped over what he says to um uh, Morgase when he's like, uh, we don't know of any rightful ruler in... Uh, in the, the two, two rivers. Because she's like, she's like Ibarra, that's a two rivers name. And I was like, how the fuck do you know that? Oh, she studied that. Her and Elaine ha like, have both. Remember in the, I know, in but the castle? I, I, oh, totally. But like, if if they haven't sent someone to the two rivers in... um, She knew the two rivers accent from Rand. Remember? Like, Maurice oh, that's is like, true. Right, right, right. Like, when Rand meets how, her... She's never been there. How Like, how would you hear an accent? How, how could you know an accent you've never heard? If if you like if your job as queen is to have lessons about your land and your people and everything surrounding it, you know, after like forty ish years of more cases, that like you would you would she she actually takes care to like know all of these things. Mm -hmm. Um and she's probably had people like report to her and so and so, even if she hasn't heard it herself, or maybe people from the two rivers have been to Caitlin. Wait, one second, I like this comment. Samantha A says Perrin makes people have noticed me send by energy. Yeah, literally though. Um, yeah, I think that one of the things that makes Morgay so fascinating mm -hmm. is that she knows her land and her people and her country so well be because of the love that she has for it. Um, and I, th and I think it's great that she like passes that on to Elaine, right? Because yeah. Elaine like studies and she, even she, she thinks that like he's Aiel, but he sounds like he's from, like, I, I, I guess for me it was that... She, she says in book one that she went to the two rivers once. Okay. That's yeah, I, yeah. She's like, I think she's probably been everywhere at least once. It's just because, I feel like because that would be they, they set up her. early on that like the, no one, the the queen's people have not been by in so long. Yeah. Um, that that it is interesting. It doesn't matter. It's it's. But yeah, she hears the last name. She's like, that's a two rivers last name. Uh, and mm -hmm. so he's like, yeah, we don't we don't know anything about a rightful ruler in the two rivers. We kind of did it ourselves. And I think the Morgase is like a little bit like she wants to be like, well, I'm your queen, and she can't. And like that's she hurts. can't, and she also realizes where he's coming from because they were attacked. They were almost burned to the ground, and they had to defend themselves. And Perrin is like, "Yeah, we we had to take care of shit ourselves." So, what 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 do you think is the Two Rivers accent then? The Two Rivers accent, I think it's like it's certainly not in the show. But. I think it's not. I I think it's one of those um things where it's it's like a regional thing where you know how um Calgary says y'all. There's yeah, just like yeah. a word or two that's like very specific to the two rivers. So so the the actual accent is not that like thick, but it's like it's just like a small like regional thing that she's like, ah, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't oh, think it's, it's canonically like, Welsh. The two rivers accent? Is canonically Welsh. So it's like um uh Jared. What? Okay, sure. Sure. I wish they'd kept that for the show. That would have been that'd great. That'd been great. I would have loved that. Although I feel like Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like Welsh accents are tough. Oh, there! That's why I wish they kept it for the show. <laughs> All the Welsh people are like, no. <laughs> and, and I wish they had only cast Americans to do Welsh accents. That would have been that would have been, that would have been the icing on the cake. That's so fun. Um, yes. Oh anyways. no, the two rivers should have been Canadians. Oh, did you kill your uh, your wife there, eh, Perrin? Oh, that's no. Oh man. She was a rocket there. <laughs> no, I hate it. We're moving on. Uh, back to chapter nine. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so Perrin's like, yeah, um, main ears. And they're like, woo. And then he moves on and he's like dreading walking to the wise ones. Before that, though, he does talk with Basil Gill one more time. Yes. Who is now the Shambayan. He's like, I feel like I didn't do a good job of making yeah. Basil Gill like, feel like comfortable. So we're going to try and fix that. Uh, Kvoth, Pendrag, thank you for that super thank chat. Thank you for the super uh, Book one, chat. chapter 40. I will give you justice then, Randall Thor, she said, because first because I have the advantage of Elaine and Gareth 
in having heard Two River Speech when I was young. Yeah, I knew that there was, because I knew that there was, like, a, a thing uh, w in that moment with Rand. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, oh, she knows. Like, she's she's studied this. She's I just well remembered it backwards that he told her that he was from the Two Rivers, but it, it, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. I, I get it. Um, the What's interesting is he, he meets Balwer. And Balwer is like... Bob was like, I deal I hear, I, in information. I drink and I know things. He's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Perrin's like, okay, that seems like suspicious, but okay. And he doesn't really take anything he says uh, to heart yeah. until he has those bits of information confirmed by other people. And he's like, oh shit, maybe yeah, Bauer is actually on to something Masima is in Alabral or something like that. It starts with an A. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, and so, but this in, this this conversation like really made me think like, what do you think Bauer's motivation is? Oh, Bauer is fucking pissed at the White Cloaks. He gave his whole life in service to them. Mm -hmm. He like followed them. I don't know if, I don't know if he ever like truly like adopted their beliefs. He just like, I feel like he's a, a dude who just did his job really well. Yeah. And he got fucked over because of that. So he's like, you know what? Valda, fuck that guy. I'm gonna... He's, do, he's done. do you think there's any element of it where Balwer wants the best for mankind and he thought that the White Cloaks... He he believed in Pedra Nile as a force for good mm -hmm. and he now views the Lord Dragon as the a force for good. Like, do you think that there's any good... Like, because here's the thing. I think that there's an interesting version of Balwer mm -hmm. who views Pedra Nile as a necessary strong hand in the world yeah for the benefit of good do you, do you think that he's a good person or do you think that he's a purely selfish person i don't know i'm inclined to lean more towards self-serving at the moment i'm just because of the information we have of him i don't think we have confirmation one way or the other right but i think that like both sides are interesting See the reason I think that the reason I think Balwer is more of a good person than a self-serving person is who he has chosen to ally himself with. Because if mean he was Margais, pure, or you mean Perrin? No, no, no. I mean Perrin and Pedro mm -hmm. Because here's the thing: I think that if he was purely self-serving, I think that it would have been easier for him to immediately ally himself with Valda. No, because he's pissed at Valda. He wants to fuck Valda up. Sure, mm -hmm. but but the reason that... He, in order for that to be true, it has to be because he cared for and believed in Pedro Nile. Right? Potentially. Like, if he's purely self-serving, then he wouldn't be that pissed at, at Valda. Mm -hmm. Right? Because what what would be the self... What would be the advantage in a self-serving mood mm -hmm. in just going for revenge? Yeah. If he's purely self-serving, I think that he has to have gone with Valda. Maybe he just really loves his job and he put himself in the position where his knowledge would be the most useful and like worth the most, right? Because he has all this information but about But he doesn't the right offer clothes. that to Morghese. No, because Morghese is nobody right now. But with Perrin, he can garner really high favor with Perrin if he keeps giving him very useful information consistently, right? Mm -hmm. He knows about the White Cloaks. He knows the information that the White Cloaks, that he gathered for the White Cloaks. And he can pass that along and really earn a high position with Perrin and with what he probably believes as, like, the new, like, regime with the Dragon Reborn. Okay. Uh, but I, I think I think that there is also an interesting version of him that uh, I don't know how into detail we will get to go with this character. But yeah, where he thought that maybe he'd just been with Pedrin Nile for so long that he he really believed in the cause and that he he thought he was doing the right thing and in the right place. And when Valda like hurt him, he he, he like um, realized these things about the White Cloaks mm -hmm. and what they actually we're doing and accomplishing and maybe turn tail. And so I think both of those could be very interesting. I'm leaning towards the more self-serving version of it. Um, and I don't know if we're going to find out either way. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Peterson says, I never thought Ball were uh, as a selfish cat. Thank you for the super chat, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, but he seemed to live to serve the best spy ma as the best spy master possible, serve anyone and watch them succeed. Yeah. It's just interesting to me that like, if you were to, if there was a good white cloak, which I don't know that there is, right? Like I, I think that it's, it, it's, I don't know that there are any good white cloaks. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, but, go around killing normal people because it's easier to kill them than to deal with them. But I think that I could see how you could see Pedra Nile as the best version of that. 
and how Valda isn't that. Mm-hmm. And I think that you ent- that you have this conversation of like, it, it just is interesting to me whether he genuinely just wants power from wherever he can have power mm-hmm. versus, you know, he has an incredible skill mm-hmm. and he's waiting for the a good person to offer that information to because he clearly hasn't told Morgase, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Uh, um, Galad is, Galad right now is working for a bad organization. Like Galad's yeah. actions right now are bad actions because of, what the white cloaks represent. Like, and here's the thing. <clears throat> I think <throat> that the white cloaks specifically have manipulated him into a position where he doesn't see the dirt underneath, right? 100%. They've kept him away from Orgais. They've put him in places where they... Because they need people to believe that they're doing the right thing. Yes. So them strategically placing him in positions where they slowly push that line mm-hmm. of what's good and what's not, right? You know, you start with the, like, holier-than-thou whatever it is, yeah. mantra, and then you slowly push him and push him and push him towards doing worse and worse and worse things. Yeah. That, that's how they get you, right? That's how these, like, cults and work and, and this whole, like, brainwashing idea is you just push it a little bit further each time and you give justifications for this specific spot and then suddenly you've crossed the line and you've gone too far yeah. and it's hard to see how you got there. Yeah. Um, and so I think that Galad is just being... Ext- like he's he's easily manipulated because of his lawfulness because sure. of his want to be like lawful good i don't think he's lawful good really no i think or that, maybe like lawful neutral. i, I think he's like, lawful neutral yeah I, I don't think that you can i don't think that um lawful good characters mm-hmm. can end up in a structure like the white cloaks yeah you know what I mean? Like law, lawful, the, the struggle with lawful good, if you're going to be complete lawful good, mm-hmm. is that you, you you have to have your own code of ethics. Because as soon as you accept another person or another organization's code of ethics, yeah. you are no longer truly lawful good because yeah. you are just a tool of somebody else. You are no longer in control of your own actions yeah, yeah, because yeah. you are allowing someone else's code of ethics to control you. Yeah. And so in uh, because of that, under that structure, lawful good is impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that is the problem with any group or society, right? Is that there is no such thing as lawful good in a group of people. Yeah. There's only neutral because you are allowing someone else to com- control you, essentially. Yeah, but if, the, if your goals are for the good and betterment of other people, I think that that can still be. But it doesn't matter what your goals are. And that's what that's what gets really complicated, right? It doesn't matter if you have the best intentions if you are not in control of your actions. If you see okay. the law as good, right? Mm-hmm. If you see the law of the land as being inherently good, mm-hmm. then you are not good. Because that law is... In, unless you are living in a fa- fictional world where the law is handed down from a god who is genuinely good, right? Mm-hmm. And that like you have like some sort of creator control... You are inherently at the behest of whoever creates those laws. Yeah. I think that, like, getting into the, like, lawful, neutral, chaotic, like, that, like, structure is so gray and, like, blended that, like, I, I, I'm i hearing what you're saying, but I'm also, like, but also, like, there's just too many, I think there's just too much gray in that, like, box of nine. You know what I mean? Um, so I, it's hard to, oh. I think, use that, like, concretely, but I, I, I totally hear what you're but, saying. But, 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 I, and, um... Who said it? Uh, uh, Eric uh, posted, uh, Galad always does the right thing no matter who it hurts. Yeah. That's not lawful good. That's lawful neutral. Yeah. Because yeah. then no matter who it hurts yes. makes it neutral yes. because it means that you're going to do harm yes. at some point. And you're going to be okay with it because the, of the good that you think it will do. I mean, it, lawful neutral means that you balance the two things against one another. Yeah. It means that you have both, right? Mm-hmm. Neutral doesn't mean that everything's down the middle. It means that you are between both. And I think that everyone, nobody is on like lawful good and lawful neutral. Everyone is between lawful neutral or lawful good and lawful evil. And that's what I mean. It's so You're gray always in between. And, like blurry. But I'm saying that you can't, you cannot accept the laws of somebody else mm-hmm. and be 100% lawful good because you are, you are inherently going to be whatever their moral compass is. Right. And unless they are lawful good, unless the person creating the laws is lawful good, but if you are under their structure, then you are not your own, if, and yeah. you are full lawful, 
Falafel. Fala if you are falafel. But as long as you are going to be full lawful and do exactly what the person above you says, you don't get to have your own moral structure. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your moral structure is whatever the person who's telling you what to do says. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and that, that's, that's why, why it's so weird. But that's why it's important to remember, like there is no such thing as like a the, the, when we have these conversations, like right now, we're having this conversation of like, is there any, is there, is it possible to be a good cop, right? Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> because if you are only following the laws of the people above you, you are whatever they are, not whatever you want to be. Right. And so, as long as the system is corrupt, and as long as the system disadvantages minorities, and as long as the system does what it does, yeah. if you are a person who pushes that system, no matter what your personal moral structure is, it doesn't matter yeah. because it only matters what the person whose orders you're following moral structure is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, it is impossible to be a good apple in a on a bad tree. Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. is. Yeah. It, it, it is. As long as you follow their word to the letter, mm -hmm. you are not your own. You are not your own moral structure. Yeah, you yeah. can't have it both ways. Yeah, and that is that 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 that's the thing that people don't seem to understand. They're like, well, no, but what about the good ones? And it's like, well, it doesn't matter because the good ones are still implementing laws mm -hmm. that are put in place by people who you can't trust to put in good laws. And as long as the laws are broken, and as long as the laws, the white cloak laws are fundamentally flawed. As yeah. long as you're a white cloak mm -hmm. who is a supporting a structure that allows questioners to murder children yeah. because their great-great-grandmother was a bad person, yeah. your, your individual moral stance doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, lawful and good are kind of almost, like, like almost don't ever work together, in a sense. It's really hard to be it's, lawful it's, good. Yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah. Except in a fictional world where there is a god who is benevolent. Like... Sure, sure, sure. Uh, under yeah, a yeah, yeah. under like a uh, under one a fictional structure like that, mm -hmm. then you can have that kind of idea of benevolence, right? Because yeah. you have this person who is you 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 actually do have a lawfully good like creator. Yeah. Um, Mortis Murs. Yeah, yeah, true. You you would have to be a paladin who hears a creator's voice. You have to, totally. but that paladin has to be able to trust that creator is actually a good person. Yeah. Yes, and, and that's my why in a favorite, fantasy setting. My favorite D&D class is a paladin for a god that they don't actually trust. They that think is, that they're lawful yeah, good. Mm -hmm. No, 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 they don't know. They hope that they're lawful good. They hope. They hope. that the, uh, the paladin who hopes that they're lawful good, but they're like, I, I'm believing in this god. I hope that they're a good god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the most fascinating shit to me because they, they yeah. are, they are, they, they, they believe themselves to be a good person and they don't have any clue whether they are or not. Yeah, 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 fascinating. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, should we, should we get back to the chapter? Um. <laughs> Sorry. I, I think this is an important conversation to have. Oh, no, I, I think it's so, a really like, cool conversation. And around Balwar, because I, I, I think Balwar is more of a good person mm -hmm. than not. I'm going to be really interested to see if we get more info about him. I'm cause... happy to be wrong if I am wrong, but I would, I, I, I just get the vibe that he's a good person. Yeah. No. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, so then Perrin meets the wise ones. Yeah, and, and they're like, hey, it's smart of you to not make the wise ones always go to you. And he's like, yeah, totally. That's exactly what I was thinking as well. <laughs> like, Yeah. He's like, it, totally. That's why I wanted to be here and no other reason. So anyways. So anyways, uh, I need you to stop beating the Aes Sedai up. And the wise ones are like, <laughs> don't fucking tell us what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, not a chance. Don't you, don't you fucking come in our tent and tell us what to fucking do. And then they're like, come in here. I, I said, I, we hear you. And she comes in and Perrin's like, wow, my nose and my super hearing didn't pick up on that. The wind was blowing the wrong direction. Uh, and the, she's like, no, no, no. Let, let, let the wise ones beat us up. And you're, I was like, wow, okay. Like, all right. This isn't what this conversation Stockholm should syndrome be at its about. Finest. Like, like, this is the conversation where parents should have been like, look, I need you guys to come up with a way to keep up appearances about Aes Sedai because Aes Sedai power is valuable to me and we need to project Aes Sedai power yeah. and you're ruining it. Like, you need to be a... Pre and the conversation should have been parent being like, look, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not telling you what to do in your own tents, mm -hmm. but when we're in front of other people, I need them to fear the Aes Sedai because of what our goals are. Yeah. I think that part of the... Um Rand will, like, break the Aeol, mm -hmm. has, like, cracked off into every other faction in society that exists in the world. Especially, yeah. like, the Aes Sedai, right? Like, well, um, they, they broke themselves. 
Sure. Uh, one quick, just quickly, Turvok, thank you for Turvok, that super chat. thank you for the super chat. Um, read the Deed of Paxinarian if you want a story about becoming a paladin. It's amazingly good. Turvok, will you post that in the Discord so I can check it out? Because I will forget. By yeah, the end of the show. We, we're yeah, we're in the middle, so we'll definitely forget it. We need like a books recommendation channel. We have so many channels in that fucking Discord. Yeah. Also, y'all, if you're doing, I'm doing Nano Remo. Um, if you're doing Nano Remo National Novel Writing Month, um, there is a channel in the Discord, uh, where we're gonna like chat as we write our books. I have written. Uh, wait, what what day is it? The fourth. Mm -hmm. I've written 250 words, so I am behind. Crushing it. Um, but uh, I am going to, I've committed to writing a novel this month. I've never mm -hmm. written a novel before. I've committed I'm going to do it. Uh, I have my plot. I have my uh, outline. I'm very excited to write my first book. It's mm -hmm. probably going to be terrible uh, because it's my first one. But yeah, if you want to join the NaNoWriMo um, channel, um, come do that. It's going to be a fun month of me trying to write a book while also getting all the work that I have to get done done. We'll figure it out. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so Perrin has this fun, fun meeting um, where it's one of those things. I, I I agree about keeping up appearances, but also like the I said I have been the worst. And I'm, I, I'm like, OK, it seems like they actually like might be learning something. Oh, no, I, I think that that 100 percent. I agree with you. Yeah. I'm just saying that I, I Perrin Go, I don't know what Perrin's goal going into this conversation was. Yeah, the was. world is going through so much change right now that, like, yeah, keeping up those appearances might have uh, worth to it. Uh, Rance, thank you for that super chat. Mm -hmm. Happy Nano Remo. Um, yeah, come join us on the Discord if you haven't yet already. Uh, Dakuna, thank you for posting that link. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, what else happens in that chapter? Oh, Oh, chapter nine was on here. Uh, um, so the Aes Sedai are like, look, they're we're going to do what we're going to do. We're not listening to you about that. But uh, you need to kill Masima. Yeah, they're like, you need to listen to us. I cannot believe we're only here. Guy. I know. An hour and a half in. We need uh, to get, this is definitely going to be a three hour show, but like we need to get moving. So Perrin's like, I'm not going to kill Masima. And they're like, you should kill Masima. And he's like, we're, no. And the Aes Sedai are like, all right, well, we are maybe not going to kill. Or the Aiel are like, well, we maybe won't kill him. And Perrin's like, can you just fucking say? Because he tries, he tries to leave the tent. He tries to make them promise. And he's like, they wouldn't really say one way or the other. So that that's great for me. Do you think, <clears throat> mm -hmm. do you think Fayil is going to have her faction kill Masima? So it's not on Perrin's hands? Um, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think that they will try and kill Masima. Here's the thing. Masima has to go. I don't think so. I think I think that he needs to meet Rand. I think he's too dangerous and disillusioned at this point. I know, but when he meets met Rand. Yeah, but when he meets Rand as uh -huh. the dragon, then Rand can direct him. I think that the problem right now is that Masima is doing what he thinks Rand wants him to uh -huh. do. And I think that as soon as he knows what Rand actually wants him to do, he would do it. But then the I said I had the discussion of like, he is a wild dog. And you, like, if it's rabid, you can't point it in the direction that you want. It will always do whatever it I wants to do. I don't know. Supreme Leader Snoke said that you keep around a wild cur and you keep it on a tight leash. And that's and why Snoke General Hux died. was the leader of, but General Hux didn't kill him. So Snoke is Snoke lasted. That was because of uh, Kylo Ren. Half. Oh my God, we are not getting. I hate. No, I'm just saying. I you know Snoke tied uh, General Hux to the end of a leash because he was a wild cur. And what did that do? It almost won him the entire fight because he almost trapped the. Uh, he all he. It, it, here's the thing: if Kylo Ren hadn't killed Snoke, Snoke would have wiped the rebels out on Crate. Sure. Um, Just saying. I uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, so Perrin goes outside and is like, Elias, what the fuck are you doing here? And he's like, Ah, you know, I heard hey, about I you. I heard you were in the area. Wanted to come hang out. Do you want I... me to? Uh, you want me to come? I, I got your back, dude. And Perrin's like, Great. Uh, my favorite Welcome is like in. last week. You were like, Remember Elias? And I was like, Yeah, he's never coming back. <laughs> I was like, oh no, he just shows up. He just walks up. Yeah. This this is the week where Perrin just like reunites all the side characters that have been forgotten about. I would love that. I would I would absolutely love that. He do finds think, ship captain. Here's the thing. Do you think no, I guess Perrin's in the wrong spot, but I was like, do you think Elaine is gonna also run into him? <laughs> but I think that they're past one another. No, they're not. Yeah, because they're Elaine is two weeks from Camelin. I need a map. Do oh, a map? right, right. No, because they jumped from Everdar. No, 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 you're right. They you're jumped right. from Everdar, but yeah, I don't right. actually have a map to see, like, what direction that could... Oh, yeah. I have a map. No, no, because Ebudar is down here. Ebudar. This is great content. 
But I was thinking that they could have swung up, but they actually teleported over here. Yeah, they teleported here, yeah. and they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I don't think they're. Um, a lot. I, I thought it would be funny. I agree with Eric. Eli sneaking up on Gaul is brilliant. Yeah. Um, I also love the moment that one of the coolest moments in this whole reading mm -hmm. was the moment where Gaul is like, he snuck up on me, and I didn't hear him until he coughed. And Perrin's like, oh, the maidens will find that funny. And he looks over at the maidens, and the maidens are like, He's a scary man. He's yeah, a yeah, big yeah. scary man. Well, and and that's the thing is like Gao has this relationship now with the maidens because of Bane and Chied, and they they you know they laugh at one another and they make it's like siblings in a lot of ways. Like don't say that, please. No, no, no. I mean the Gao is going to fuck two of them. So. Sorry, no, no, but I mean like the it's like <coughs> a sibling relationship where you like but you stop hope... calling them siblings. They are going to bone. I they mean want the to factions. fuck so bad. I mean the factions, right? The factions will make fun of one another when they're not like in like actual real like danger oh, yeah, yeah. but they got your fucking back if shit goes down and yeah, yeah. I, I i thought that that was a good moment yeah yeah they're like they're so like ready and it's interesting how we've seen that change because of the relationship that bane and gal and chiad all have together we have barely seen bane and chiad at all yeah which is sad um we've also barely seen loyal what happened to my boy where is he yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> the, there's an announcement. Berlaine rides back into town. Mm -hmm. And Elias is like, I'm not going to come over there. But like, if you need me to, I will. And he's like, no, no, I'm good. It's my wife. It'll, it's going to be fine. And so Perrin uh, goes... No, Berlaine. What? Doesn't, isn't it Berlaine, not his wife? But they ride to Bile's tent. Oh, they go meet in fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, and so Perrin's like, no, it's good. But, well, let's chat later. And he's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and so Perrin goes in and... He's like, who is this messenger that you have with you? And it's like, boom, I'm the queen. And Perrin's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what? <laughs> Hi, Aleandra. Fuck, I just said her name. Oh, no, I didn't call her my queen. And uh, Aleandra's I'm gonna... like, you used my name? I swear fealty to you. Well, no, no, no. He, per, no, no the, Perrin does a couple more fucked up things. <laughs> That's true. That would be fucked up, but he shows his strength accidentally because he sits down and is like, please sit. And he just watches She's as like, the queen's like, stands there and then he's like should i stand up while they're sitting no i'll just sit and so he's stone on the outside inside he's it's a 13 like, year old boy who's like i don't know what the hell's going on i right think now. i might see a boob you know what i mean he has that like energy yeah, yeah. of like a child like, who'd like ah, 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 but on the outside he's stone cold and yeah. aleandra's like oh my god this man is so strong he's so formidable he's not scared of kings he has the manethrin banner outside he might take my head and so he's like what do you want to do? please sit and aleandra's like Instead of sitting in the chair, goes to her knees and is like, I give you, I swear fealty to you. Not to the dragon. Nope. To, to you, Perrin Ibarra. Yeah, to Perrin. I, and I love that this, like, accidental, like, Perrin, like, bungling along because he has no idea what the fuck is going on or how to, like, interact with, like, royalty. That she's like, oh, my goodness, he's so good at the deus de mar. I, I, I have no other choice but to throw myself he's at so his feet. so formidable. <laughs> Uh, that that moment was great because you're we get parents' perspective, mm -hmm. and then we get uh, uh, Aleandra's conversation with Faya later. Yeah, where she's like, "Wow, he's just so incredible." And Faya's like, "Yeah, I know he is." And then by the end of it, Aleandra's like, "You know, I said your husband was formidable, but um, dang, girl, you uh, you know what you're doing." Yeah, and so Perrin is rebuilding Menethrin. He's collecting Basically. queens. He Perrin is collecting queens. That's so funny. Oh, Fahil we skipped over Elias telling Perrin to yell at his wife. <laughs> Clarice, this is this is Clarice's high for this section. Yeah, no, we skipped it for a reason. Um, yeah, this whole like your marriage will do better if you scream at your wife is bad advice. Yeah, don't yell at your wife. I'm I'm telling you right now that like nobody likes being yelled at. This is like a weird like leftover nineties-ism. Well, and if she does like being yelled at, then therapy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like you know, there's some things to to work through because you it's just are. not healthy, and 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 you're not gonna have. Look, and I say this, we're married, right? Mm -hmm. We are. Mm -hmm. sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. almost positive uh, that happened. You, you don't, you don't like. Yeah, it's it's not great, but it also yeah. gets into like the stuff about Fayil that we've had, like because I like Fayil. Yeah, but there have been times in our if you go through our book club, like there's times where I'm like I don't like that they hit each other so much. Like, they, they have a kind of relationship that I don't think is very yeah. healthy. They, yeah, they um, have a toxic relationship that is because of nurture, like, the, but, the, but their it, culture, and it, it's weird. It's a fantasy thing where fantasy writers like to be like, well, they're just, I'm creating different cultures, so, like, it's different. And it's like, no, that's And I'm like, traumatic. that's not healthy. Like, that yeah. is not healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. There's a, there are therapists who will help you through that. <laughs> 
Perrin, the, the advice should be for Fael to become more like Perrin and not the other way around. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm worried that he's going to start yelling at her and then the book well, is going to treat it like, oh, Perrin did the right thing. And like, I think that that is a bad example set, to set for real people who excuse yeah. abuse, particularly from men towards their wives, because, they, oh, they're just hot headed. Oh, they're just, they're, there's a lot of they're just. And I think that there's, I think it's unhealthy, and I, I don't think it is the right example to set. Yeah, Be, especially personally. because like Perrin is such a wonderfully fascinating character because he's like I'm I'm big and I'm scary and I keep my temper in check because I and know he how it the shit out he of his respects wife. her and he yeah. he knows how that can come across and I think that that's more the stance and the side that we should be airing on, not like yeah, let your temper fly loose because generational trauma like yeah. it like i yeah it it, it 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 makes me uncomfortable and i really hope that we don't go in the direction of parent yelling at his wife makes her happier yes because that's gonna be weird i agree yeah mm-hmm. yeah i agree with that mm-hmm. um and so uh, aleandra swears and um parents like all right you can go home now and files like no no no, we're gonna have lady time uh parent go hang out lady and time. so parents like okay whatever uh, something's going on with the mainers i'm gonna go check that out mm-hmm. and file does some Chafail hand talk, and her people form a shield wall around, or a, a casual shield wall mm-hmm. around the tent. Um, and she's like, Anora, silence. And then Berlaine is like, Berlaine like scoots in on her right, and Anora scoots in on her left, and he's like, Yes, the women do what I want. Berlaine and I would be friends if she wasn't trying to fuck my husband so hard. Um, yeah. And so uh, she sits down and Anura sits and she's like, you're coming with us. And Anura's like, no, I'm not. And I'm like, oh, I don't think you understand. You swore fealty. You're coming with us. Yeah, and Anura, and like, Alejandra's like, oh, shit. Right. I did do that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, cool. And Fayo's like, good. Yeah. Why do you think Fayo wants uh, Alejandra with them physically? Um, I feel like, ugh, Okay. Masima is like unhinged, right? Yes. And I think that having a face there that he thinks he has some control over, like he has that 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 he can not relate to. That is the that is the wrong word. But um having her there as almost a buffer mm-hmm. is is smart, right? Because they don't really understand Masima and why he's doing what he's doing and like any of that. Fair. Um, and so she's met with him. Yeah. She has information that could be very useful. And like obviously they I think they'll protect her, but she like her being there adds a um importance, I think, to them showing up and being like, hey Masima, cut that out, right? Um, yeah, yeah, cause, yeah. You know, because because Masima right now believes that Aleandra to be like devoted to the Dragon Reborn and mm-hmm. such, and I think that that will at least carry a little bit of weight, so that Masima doesn't just order everybody to fight immediately and burn the world to the ground. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I like in, in the book. You know, Fayol mentions that she she's worried that Aleandra will just swear to whoever, but I I I I think that it's I think it's deeper than that, right? Like yeah. I don't I think that. She is trying to accomplish Rand's goal of having Aleandra be so publicly committed to Rand. Yeah, and yeah, so that's I think, definitely helping. I think that riding around the countryside, I also think that people in, I think that as they're going around encountering these local bandits or whatever, if they see the queen of their local country with this force, it's more likely to collect more people. And I think that Fayil mm-hmm. is thinking about that. I think Fayil is trying to like build this army up. Yeah. Um, and I think that having the local queen with them is, are you just ripping your... Book? I didn't mean to. Okay. Um, it's fine. Uh, so I think having her with them, I, I think there's a lot of reasons. I, obviously the one in the book is, is, is valid and I think that it's part of it, but I think it's deeper than that. I think Fayil is playing, I think Fayil thinks that she's playing three dimensional chess and she's actually playing like Ticket to Ride. Ticket to run. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. Fayil really is like, I'm fucking on this shit. Yeah. And what, what I'm finding so fascinating about Fayil is that everyone else is doing their dang job publicly. And Fayil's doing all of this stuff behind the scenes that isn't that important. But Fayil yeah. thinks it's, like, fucking incredible. She's I, like, I, I sent five people to go kidnap this queen. And Berlin was like, I just asked her to come and she came. And so, like, I think that Fayil, Fayil makes everything more difficult than it needs to be. Uh, sometimes, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, uh, James Ross, uh, thank you for that super chat. I'm interested to know what Clarissa's reading comprehension scores were in school. You got a sharp one there, nerdy. I I do. I know. I it was in the 98th percentile. 
I took many tests. Wow. Um, oh my God, the 90th percentile. Thank you. <laughs> my reading comprehension score is very high, but my reading score was not good. When I, when I got like officially diagnosed with ADHD, I had to do a, a bunch of, um, a, 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 yeah, just a bunch of like weird random tests. Mm. So I used to be a much faster reader actually, but yeah. We are busier now. I am fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely busier. I got, a super chat. I, I got a perfect score on the SAT reading comprehension. Oh, I was like, SAT. Yeah. I was like, I never wrote an SAT. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, um, I, my SAT scores were the only reason I got into American colleges. Because my grades were right, good. Right, right. My grades were, like, good. But, like, yeah. I, I'm because I'm, I got an academic scholarship from musical theater, which was hilarious to me. But, like, <laughs> I love it. I got an academic scholarship because of my SAT score, which was, like, which was funny because it was just because it was super easy compared to the Alberta curriculum. Mm hmm Alberta in Canada has like the hardest high school Stupid. curriculum in North yeah. America. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 horrendous what they do. Yeah, and so uh, no, it's great, right? Because like I got to I got to I got to just get uh, an A on uh, an immediate A without having to take the course on four college. Cl yeah. I got four college credits for free because of how hard the curriculum was. If you make it through high school. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. If you make it through high school. Yes, because yeah. it's not very friendly to uh, neurodivergent people. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, no, that, that's 100% fair. Another tangent. <laughs> Another tangent. That's what the show is. Who is keeping track? Um, so, uh, Aleandra is going to be one of Fael's girls. Fael's creating her own Wonder Girls. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be the magic Wonder Girls, and then there's going to be the political Wonder Girls. Right, I love it. And it's it. going to be more gay Fael and Aleandra being like... Strutting their stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, oh my god. I actually um, kind of love that. And so we are at our final moment with Perrin, where he walks over to the Mainers, and the Mainers are like, we found these guys. Perrin's like, hang them. And so they're like, okay. And then, yeah. I bless the rains down in Gilden. It fucking rains. They're like, what? That sweet, sweet sky water falls from the heavens. <laughs> the Aiel are like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, the yeah. water just drops from the sky? <laughs> Yeah, 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 like Gowl is like ex like just being like absolutely dumbstruck. It is um I, I know it's small, but it's I hope they keep it in the show. You know? What oh I mean? no, 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 they hope, have to. like that, like that. Yeah, yeah. Th that was like oh it's my not God. even that an expensive an effect, right? Mm -hmm. So this is one of those moments that like if they do this digitally, I'll be pissed. Just do physical water. Yes. Um, yes. but really cool. Mm -hmm. I, I thought this was like this moment was really fun. I was waiting for it too because parent throughout this whole section, parents like was that. That wasn't thunder. Thunder? Nah. I'm fucking hearing things, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm going crazy. I'm turning into Rand. Uh, and then it rains, and he's like, oh, goddamn, water from the sky. Forsaken? Maybe? Maybe. Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Don't know yet, but I'll take it. Maybe the Dark One just changed his mind. <laughs> Path of Daggers, Chapter 11. Questions and an oath. Um, we start off with Savannah, who is, like, killing people to question them. And yep. she's like, you guys, we're going to be fine. We've got all the wise ones. We got all the channelers. The San Chan aren't going to be a problem, uh, and you are mine. And we see for the first time <laughs> the wise ones being like, "No." Savannah, Savannah has kind of gone. I think I pushed a little too far, and yeah. I think that she's starting to lose her 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 grip on these people. Yeah, one of my favorite things is actually that we get this from Galena's perspective. Yes. Because Galena's mm -hmm. like, this woman can't even channel. They could absolutely annihilate her. Mm -hmm. What the hell are they doing? And, yeah. and we and we finally have that moment that we've all been fucking waiting for <laughs> where um, somebody like starts to put Savannah in her place yes uh, which is very cool but yeah we get to uh, we get to catch up with Galena uh, first we're with Savannah they're at like a yes. barn um, a little bit away from where the Jumai are uh, right, and the like Ma'andar the, the Mara'adin mm -hmm. uh, which are the brotherless and so that we have these two scenes where first we see Savannah kind of lose her grip on the wise ones a little bit uh, so she goes back to the the valley where all of the Jumai are, and mm -hmm. she's like, the the Maradin have um, a thing that needs to be dealt with, and so Savannah's like, oh, these six wise ones, I'm I'm part of the Jumai, so I shouldn't deal with this. These six wise ones will go with you, and, and at they're first, gonna make the decision. You're like, oh, Savannah's delegating in like a good way. <laughs> yeah, no, That's no. interesting. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and so, no, no, Savannah is tricking them so that she can go force Galena to swear an oath to her. But she she's not fast enough because apparently court the Aiel court moves real quick. Yep. They heard both sides in a lightning speed. Oh yeah. They I mean they 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 wanted to give a big fuck you to Savannah anyways. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think it took very long. And so they uh they come over. 
just in time to see uh, Galena holding the oath rod. And Galena is sitting there. And Savannah's like, look, we, we, we don't have to have you in black anymore. We can, we may not even put you in white. The wise ones are not well, going to have that. First, they like put this powder on Galena and like hang her up. Oh my fire. fucking God. Right. Oh my God. You guys, the Aiel are so fucked up. Yeah. Like the Aiel are a fucked up people. As much as I love them, they're fucking, the, the, the things that they think are okay are fucked up. Mm -hmm. But they are cooking Galena alive. Well, they, they're not cooking her. Yes, they are. No, they put this powder on her to enhance the like pain of it. But I don't think she's actually like, like. No, no, you, you, that's how you cook things. What? That, they are literally cooking her. There are herbs and spice. There are they, they have the KFC herbs and spices in the fucking bag with her. No, they are it's literally not cooking herbs her. and spice. No, it's like an itching powder. No, 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 no. no. They, they also have herbs and spices in there. No. Yeah, yeah, I know they do. No, they don't. No, a hundred percent. You are they do. lying. No, you are lying. It, they're she, they're not like cooking her. They they are torturing her. Yes, by cooking her. They're <laughs> if you put meat over a fire. And you slowly warm it up. You are cooking the meat. That that, that they, the the torture that they're doing is cooking her alive. Sure, I guess it is going that direction. It's not going. That's literally what it is. They literally say in the chapter but that they're, they're not, cooking her. No, they're not actually burning her. They put a powder on her that activates with the heat to make it feel like she's burning, but her her safety is not in danger. Her safety is a thousand percent in danger. No, she is. Hanging over a fire. Well, yeah. I mean, if the rope broke, then she'd definitely be in danger. No, if they left her long enough. Look, they they stopped. They 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 weren't gonna kill her by cooking her, <laughs> but they were cooking her. If you They're take the cooking. chicken out of the oven before it's done, you still cooked it a little bit. Okay, but if you put chi raw chicken out in the sun for an hour, that's not cooking it. It depends on how hot it is. If you're in Louisiana, you can cook an egg on the sidewalk. <laughs> Eggs, okay, fine, whatever. Not a human. It's it is no. she it is cooking her. No, they are torturing her without putting her in. If you hang somebody danger. over a fire, you are cooking them in a bag where the bag gets hotter on the inside because of the fire. You are cooking them alive. There, this isn't a question. No. This is a fact. No. Yes. No, they are not cooking her. <laughs> yes, they are not cooking her. They were making her hot and torturing her and, and making her uncomfortable. The, okay, the idea that they weren't cooking her, they were only heating her up by yes. putting her over a fire is what fucking cooking is. Okay, so do you think that branding somebody is cooking them? What? Because you're burning them? No, you're burning them. That's different. Okay, so they were burning her. They no, weren't they weren't her. burning her. Yeah, they put this powder on to make it burn. And no, hurt. no, that that was to, that that made it more uncomfortable. But the, no, 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 it's no, like no. a heat activated powder. If you heat up her whole body at the same time, you are cooking her. Literally, that's just that's what cooking is. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh what do you God. mean no? Do we have a mod? Can we how, have, can how we have a poll? How the fuck would you define cooking? Can we have a poll in chat? I actually don't know if a mod can do a poll. I don't know how to do a poll. I I want to know. I, I feel like this was just like a torture thing. It's not like a... They put her they're on... They're not trying to kill they her. They put her... They, that, that is literally how you cook things. You can... It, if they left her long enough, she oh would have God. cooked. She would have been edible. Granted, she's edible raw, but... Uh, they would have had to leave her over that fire for a week. A uh, what? Yeah. I, okay. Uh, you clearly did not camp enough as a child. You can cook something much faster over a fire. A human is large. We're not talking about a rabbit. You can cook a pig in an afternoon. They're not. Galena doesn't weigh 400 if pounds. You put it this far above the fire. Yeah. What? What? That's what they did. No, she's hanging from a tree. What are you talking about? No. They put her in a fucking sack above no. a fire. No. <laughs> no. The only reason she doesn't get cooked is because they take her down before she's fully cooked. Yes, then that was the plan. Oh They're my not God. cooking You don't know what the plan was because Savannah stepped in and stopped it. She didn't stop it. Yes, she, she did. No, they, they, like... Savannah literally has them take her down so that she can get her on the oath rod. They were going to leave sure. her up there. They were sitting there having a grand They're old time. Oh, my God. Um, Sorry, we missed that super chat. Um, there was a super chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, Cooking causes uh, Desi, a change that is re irreversible. Desi, thank you for that <laughs> super chat. I, I cannot believe no. that you think that they weren't 
They were not cooking her. Yeah. Uh, Perry Wolf, thank you for that super chat. Perry Wolf says, sorry, Clara's heat rises. It's hotter above a fire than in a fire. Let's fucking no, go. No, I can put my hand five feet above a fire and it will slowly get warmer. If I put my hand in a fire for five minutes, it will burn. Depends on how far above the fire. I said like five feet above the fire, which is what Galena is. I just... <laughs> Carla, thank you for that super chat. What if they put the fireworks in that man's size bag over that fire? Then oh it would explode. What? How the fuck do you think fireworks work? Who said that? Who fucking said that? Carla, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh my God. They're not cooking her. We're moving on. She got tortured. I mean, then you say what fucking happened. Uh, so um, Galena is broken. She is a sad excuse for an Aes Sedai. And she's been like plotting how to get back at all these people. And they're like, will you swear to me? Savannah's like, will you swear? And she's like, yes, please. God damn it. And she's like, great. Here is a cock. You're gonna swear. You're gonna swear on it. And this is the hundred and eleventh cock, as opposed to the third one that the I said I use in the White Tower. Um, this so dot fine. saying is tough as an old ewe, Belinda cackled. But I always found even the toughest old ewe was made tender if cooked slowly with the right herbs. Yeah, they're not. She cast- uses the word cooked. Yeah, but they're not actually cooking her. It's a. It's it's a metaphor. It's not a metaphor when you are literally doing the thing. All right. You can't. <laughs> All right. We weren't playing you hockey. Nerdy Herbie. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways. It's not a metaphor when you are literally doing the thing. No, they're not. They're, oh, my God. Thank you, Dragon Snacks, for that super chat. Webster's defines cooking as preparing food by combining, mixing, and heating Ingredients. Yeah. Combining. Human person with peppers. She's not food. Mixing. Putting them in a bag together they and heating over a fucking fire. In the fucking oh my They god. put the fucking shit in the fucking thing. Yeah, it's like itching powder. Oh my god. She's not food. Fish are friends, not food. Um Ken Yashman, welcome to the nerd table. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, um, Galena's like, well, shit, I said I would swear, so now I have to swear on this um, 111th dildo. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what do you think the number means? Does she? Is it like that you can only swear 111 things on the rod? Because they say that the oath rod has a three on it. Yeah, which Galena thought was just because it was the three oaths. I don't think so. I think that like... There's 111 oath rods? Yeah, or maybe even more. That were, like, made throughout the Age of Legends. I still can't believe you think she wasn't being cooked. Um, yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, I just it, read that it's weird that they're numbered. Ilaj wants to know if uh, Asana is used to cook humans. If, if that's your definition of cooking. You could use Asana to cook a human. It wouldn't get hot. I, I don't think it's most... It's like a crock pot. I don't, no, I don't think saunas get hot enough. <laughs> she, okay, anyways, it's fine. No, 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 um, but seriously, like, because I it's just steam... Steam from putting water over coals. Like I, I don't think that you could get a sauna hot enough to cook a human. Whereas over a fire, you can cook a human. I guess it depends on how close they are. Uh... Sauna is like steaming vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Kate! We are moving on from this conversation. I love a list. I love a steamed testicle after the sauna. You know. God. Salty, delicious. Uh, so Galena, it's Sufi, basically. <laughs> Galena has now sworn to Savanna and T thermal T T T T thermal paste. Th- th- no, Savanna and thermal paste. Are... No, that's not. No, no, no. It's Therava. Therava, thank you. Um, because Therava is like, hey, so Savanna. We've been talking, and Savannah's like, wait, you've been talking without me? I'm basically the clan chief. And she's like, yeah, so sometimes the wise ones, because we're wise ones, sometimes we have to speak without the clan chief present. And so we've decided that you're going to be advised by a wise one, and it's me, bitch. Hi! And so Galena swears to obey Tharava and Savannah before anyone else, but basically like the I, the wise ones in the Aiel. Um, Can and I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. Do you care at all about this plotline? Yeah. Fuck Galena. 
Oh, I don't give a shit. Oh, I want her I, to cry. I think the Savannah stuff has gone on for too long. I like. I really? Li- I really am at a point where I'm like, fuck. I don't. I I don't care. Like, it's definitely not since the most Doom Eyes Wells. Part. They have not done anything. Mm-hmm. They're just kind of around, and we get these weird chapters where like th- nothing happens. Yeah. They don't. Their desires are kind of meaningless to me. I just. I. I really don't care about the Jumai. Line, Honestly, in terms of where it's going, there's just so yeah. ma- there's so many bigger things happening. Oh, 100. That like this is this whole chapter. I was like, I, I legitimately kind of wish they had just died at Dumai's Wells because I yeah. I don't care. Like there's nothing there's here that be, it attracts my attention. There's gonna be something. I know it. It's Robert Jordan. There will be something for me reading it. Savannah being like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking marry Rand. I'm like, girl, how? Literally how? And so I want yeah. to see her and Rand meet up and how the fuck she's gonna convince Rand to like marry her. Uh, that's that's the only reason that I'm still like interested in it. But there's there's gonna be something because I, I, yeah, I think that that plotline as a whole is far less interesting than all, all of the other ones. Well, it's just trying to make Savannah a main character and I, I just, I don't. Uh, She's not a main character. Well, and <laughs> Do My as, well as was two books ago now. Yeah. And we've had maybe one chapter worth of plot from this, from this, but we've had like five chapters of them. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I think that it's, it's, it's this, this chapter kind of sucked me. I was like, whatever. I, I don't give a shit. I think having the relationship of her with Samuel was interesting with Graindall there. Like that, that was at least intriguing how they um, talked to one another and how they interacted. But yeah. yeah. It was fine. Yeah. It, but it didn't lead to anything. It, mm-hmm. it just led... It, it, and I think that that's what ruined it, right? Is that Savannah to Samael was just mm-hmm. a thing to mess around with. Yeah. And that even Samael was like, these people don't matter. And I'm like, well, then why should I care? Yeah. Um, you're going to move on to the next section, and I'm going to go pee really quick. What? Clarus is taking a potty break? Like, this book club is definitely going to go on longer than the next um, 20 minutes. So I will I will BRB. Guys, we can do anything. Clarus isn't here Clarus isn't here anymore. What's up? How are we doing? Uh, Savannah is trying to make herself a main character in the story. Interesting take. I I think she is. Yes. Pants off. Pants off. Pants off. Nope. It's no pant party tame. All right. Chapter twelve. New alliances. Guys, this is another chapter where I was like, ah, uh, fuck. Tell us about your book, nerdy. I haven't written it yet, Blue. I don't have a lot to tell. Um, Nerdy Nightly from another blog. Wise one and former maiden, Belind, having her tied inside a leather sack and slowly cooked over a bed of hot coals because Galena slapped the woman. She, it was cooking. Like, guys, I don't even, it's not a big deal, but, like, that's what it is. That's what this form of torture is, is cooking her. That's why it's torture, because they're treating her like food. I don't, like, I, because otherwise, what would you call it? (laughs) Like, the Dragon Reborn is really a woman. It's Savannah. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, it's tough, y'all. It's it's tough out there sometimes. So, chapter 12. Grandel. Oh, my God. Do you guys remember Grandel? I haven't seen her in a minute. Grandel is chilling in her house, and Mogideon opens a portal and, like, rings a chime, which is really cool. I like this idea that Grandel was like, ah, someone remembers the finer things of an old age. But every other time the Forsaken have visited each other in these early books, they they haven't, like... They, they haven't done this thing. So they this implies that the Forsaken have been deliberately rude to each other earlier on in these books, which I kind of like. And that now the for, now um Megidian is like, oh, I need to like show some respect. When in the in the past books, these Forsakens have not shown the same respect to each other. Yeah. <laughs> what? Why are you coming in here like you're fucking Megden pretending to be a queen. You're like, oh yes. Like yes. You all know I just urinated. I did. Um, it was great. Fantastic. Wow, this <laughs> has welcome. been a real. This has been a real potty time episode of the Nerdy Wordy Book Club. Honestly, yeah, you're a right. A lot of poop talk. A lot of pee talk. I'm not sorry about it. Um, yeah, this moment where where Grandal is like, oh, common courtesy, <laughs> and we're like. Nobody ever did that before? Okay, cool, cool, cool. The yeah, Forsaken it, are all like, fuck you. It's it's so funny, right? Because like that we've seen the Forsaken come to each other through portals. Yeah. And they've never done this before. Mm-hmm. And I just think, I was like, oh, it's interesting that the, this is the first time that they've done this one. We, we've seen them show each other respect in the past. Like, 
respect. It, it, was, it was just so, <laughs> it was weird to introduce this now. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it was meant to be that, yeah, all the Forsaken are like, fuck you. And don't, uh, like, show, like, the proper yeah, it was manners. Just, it, I, I was, like, the, it's one of those things where, like, okay, like, in book eight, it's, like, a fun new thing. Yeah. But it immediately makes me go back to previous things where I'm like, well, why didn't they do that every time they were coming to each other's houses? Like, we've yeah. never seen anyone ring a doorbell before. No. Never. Yeah. And we haven't seen Grendel do it, which is weird because we've seen Grendel go to Samael. I mean, and so yeah. if Grendel thinks that this matters, it's it's whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter. But it was just one of the, my first thought was like, oh, it's weird that we've never seen this before. Even no, though we've seen these characters visit each other before. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, um, one thing that I did put in my notes, sorry, going one one step back to the Galena thing. She talks about that the, the oaths can be undone by the oath rod, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that makes sense. I wonder if, um, whoever's in charge of the oath rod back at the white tower is block Aja and that's how they get out of their oaths when they swear to the dark one. Oh, I assume the dark one had his own. We've been big kind black of, rod. we've been kind of like swear on the BBR. <laughs> We've been kind of told, I hate you. Uh, we've been kind of told. Oh my that God, I want a shirt the, that is the Dark One's Oath Rod and it's like a vaguely black, no, like large no, black penis no, shape. No, mm, no, no. Uh, mm, um, Neil for the Dark One's Oath Rod. Jesus Christ. But uh, but uh, uh, like we've been kind of like inferred that um, <clears> when <throat> you swear to the Dark One, it kind of like breaks those old oaths. But I wonder if that's actually not the case, and that the Oath Rod is in the possession of a Black Aja. No, I think there's. I think that the Dark One has his own rod. Nah, yeah, maybe that's n- number two of the mm, the rod. It's gonna be number one. No, 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 no. There's gonna be something that's number one. I don't think it'll have a number. Unexpected. I think that it's his own thing. It's his own. He's like, no, it's Why would not it be one of those. We, the numbers are only on Oath Rods. They're not yeah. on all terrain rails. No, no, no. I thought that the number one would be like a stupid rod that like does something really dumb. But three and 111 do the same thing. Well, that we know of. Oh, so you're assuming that they do other things. Who knows? All right. I don't Maybe know. one is also like a really good um, cat scan. You never know. They don't know what any of these terrain rails do. Cat scan? Yeah. <laughs> why, why would... Why would you make a Durangriel that is both an oath rod and a cat scan? The Age what, of Legends, man. What possible purpose would that have? You never know. You never know. I'm just saying. Why, why would you it's put those possible, two things together? Okay. <laughs> it is possible. This is absolutely fucking chaotic. Anyways, yes. <laughs> why? Um, so Mogadian and uh, Elsa um, show up to see Grandal. Elsa. I forget her name, but she's got, like, icy blue eyes and blonde hair. Sarandi. The, the, another S name. Um, it's a C. Did you read the oh, book? Oh, no, no, no. You're, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Guys, there, th- th- we have gotten to the point where there are too many names. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to be straight up with you. God damn. There are far too many names, and I, I, I can't keep them straight. So, um, <laughs> this show's a fucking disaster. So, <laughs> Grandal is like, wow, Elsa's really, really Sarandi. strong in the power. Why are you calling her Elsa? The cult Why does do bother her. Why do we call her. Salad, salad our salad bar? Because they rhyme, Chorus. I like Elsa better. Um, oh, my fucking God. She's going to break out We cannot song. start naming characters completely random things. Why not? Because then we won't be able to remember our own made-up names for characters that already have too many. We can't. We do not need to add more names to the Wheel of Time. It's Cindy Lou Who. Thank you. Sure. Cindy Lou Who I will accept. Great, great, great. Cindy Lou Who I will accept. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, she shows up, and she's very clearly somebody who is slash was important. I, she's the other box. We do find out that she's the other soul box. Yes. Because they, like, shiver. The Corso Orvara. Yes. Now, okay, do you yes. think Moradin and Shaddai Haran are the same? No. Okay. Yeah, I was confused by that because they're like, wait, you serve Moradin. And then Shaddai Haran shows up and is like, hey, I'm the voice of the Dark One. Yes. But he's not the nipples? He's not the nipples because he is just the voice of the Dark One. Yeah. I. It's like, was- so Moradin is the Witch King and... Uh, Shaydar Haran is, is the, the mouth, mouth of Sauron. <laughs> Great. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. 
yeah. So Grain Doll is like, I think you're fucking. Why cross? Mm-hmm. Thank you for that Australian super chat. Um, uh, I will read your super chat in your native language. This is the energy I came here for. <laughs> How'd I do? How's my Australian accent? Guys, this is absolutely huh? absolutely unhinged. All right. Um, Sell it around there. Yeah. Okay. Enough. <laughs> I kind of wish that the um that the um no no you've done a really good Sanchin, job. <laughs> I wish the Sanchin had an Australian accent. I could be like, hey, Ran, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Oh my god! Neither does. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, me and Perrin going for a bloody ripper there. Jesus Christ! Um. Anyways, Green Doll is like, I don't believe you guys. Mm-hmm. And then Shadar Haran shows up and is like, I am the mouth of Sauron. And she's like, Oh shit! Okay, sorry, my bad. Yeah. Um. But she doesn't know who Morden is. Never heard of him before. Yeah. So that's interesting since they're both from the Age of Legends. So no, that's no, 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 no. Went but, too no. Long. but here's the thing: she probably does know Morden. You think so? Yeah, because or he she doesn't name. see his face. I see. He's only recently started calling himself Morden, right? Because Morden is the name that the Dark One allows him to have. Because he calls yeah. himself Death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think they've probably met. That I think there's a reason mm-hmm. why he do, he's not there physically. And I think it's because Grindel would know who he is. But uh, Mogidian doesn't. She doesn't recognize his face. Mm, that's true. What if it says Modian? Brought back. Oh my god, that would be absolutely ridiculous. Or what if he like... I do like that more. I, I, I like that Grendel doesn't like to go outside. Like, like Grendel, nature is too unruly. I don't like windows. Grendel must be the palest motherfucker ever. It's fine. Cast me. I will do it. You would be so fun as Grendel, and you could fuck everybody on set. Ah, uh, perfect. You'd be like, this is your bisexual dream. Yeah, just like just having a bunch of hot people like doting on you on screen. It's like me as um as Jennifer in the scene where everybody. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that honestly, The Witcher already did the best Grendel scene. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, The Witcher already kind of like nailed it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we find out that uh, Shadar Haran is like working for Morden, which I wasn't really sure about. I thought they might have not been right on the same page, but it definitely feels like Morden is the big bad now. Well, because they call Morden the nipples. Yes, like he has been given that title. Yes, Ma- so... somewhere Semail is in hell screaming in anger. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, this was interesting. I actually, I, I liked the scene quite a bit. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I, I kind of am like, who the fuck is Sindane? Like, why, why the fuck? What the? What is this? It's gonna. She's gonna be somebody. We just I don't hope know we find out in this yet. book. Because if this is yeah. another character that gets mysteriously introduced and then it's not explained for like two bucks, I'm like, Robert Jordan, come on, what the fuck are we doing? Here? We're we're not we're not gonna. Find She's out. super powerful. Spoiler it's cool. alert. I, I just I hope that we like. It's it's weird to like be introduced to a character without any context that makes me care. Because I'm just kind of like, cool, another person, if they matter later, they do. If they don't matter later, I like, whatever. It doesn't yeah. matter to me. She doesn't matter to me right now because it's so, okay, whatever. So nebulous. Could be anything at all. Yeah. So it's like, all right, well. That's and actually someone we've already met, which is interesting. Who has blue eyes? The problem is that, like, every woman is described as having big tits and piercing eyes. So, like, at this point, it That's could be That's true. Anyone. She has an impressive bosom, but so does everybody else in Randland. So, I'm I like, think that's the reason why Savannah, had, why Robert Jordan kept Savannah around as a character is because he was like, God damn it, I wrote her to have the best tits and I can't get rid of the best tits in my series. So. Yeah, yeah, this this is all about the tits. We'll cut over to Kid Swain. Mm-hmm. Kid Swain, my least favorite character, is riding up to the palace with Dejian and Kumira. Yes. Um... And uh, they go, and uh, she just has a meeting. It, this could have been an email. This could have been an email? This POV could have been an email, you guys. No, the end bit of it is the best. Could have been an email. Get fucked. Her and Soralia being like, you you want to work together? No. Yeah. No, no, no. Are we basically the same character? Maybe. But that's cool, right? Like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it is no. funny that she was like, oh, this woman, this woman is, is formidable. And also... Probably my age. And I was like, how the fuck do you know that? I know. That, I was like, sure, whatever you say. It's like, that's a crazy assumption to make. But I love this moment where we actually see two characters who have similar goals talk to it, yeah, yeah. talk talk about it to one another, mm-hmm. right? A- 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 and then agree to, to kind of take this path together. And yeah. I... Fucking loved this scene. I thought it was great. Her with Alana was, yeah, that was kind of like... How do you feel about Ked Swain being like, I probably would have done what Alana did, but honestly, it was such a bad idea that I'm not going to force her to give me the bond. 
Yeah, that was a little. That That's was a weird, weird, right? It was weird. Yeah. It was weird. Also, I love that um, Sora Leia sits down and is like, so Alana forcefully bonded Rand. That's interesting, huh? And Kat Swain's like, Swain's like oh, oh, shit. That, okay. um, they already know. Cool, 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 cool. That is, it's interesting that you know what that is. Yeah. Mm. Well, and she's like, um, the, I said I said that they haven't taught linking yet, but who knows? Yeah, and Sora Leia being like, how about I teach you how to travel? And Sora Leia and, uh, uh, and Kat Swain's like, the fuck have you? Fuck, yeah, 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 yeah. Please, please go She's ahead. Like, I <laughs> yes, do not go. have a gift that is the same value I can give you. And yeah. Sorelia is like, yes, you owe me. It was interesting. I, I, I think the scene is great. I, I have it's no, great. I, I the have no water complaints. bond. Yeah. Um, water the water oath. oath. Yes. I, I think, I, I think this scene was really cool. I was making a joke about the email, mo- mostly the Alana the, the, se- the section. Stuff? Yes. The, I, I the scene is only worth it because Sorelia showed up. Because yes. before that, I was like. Like, why is this here? The scene is a lot. And here's the thing. I don't know why Robert Jordan writes it like this. Because I'm like, just don't have them already have had this conversation off screen. And yeah. Like, Alana, make it new information. Make it new information. Because Alana sends a whole thing being like, I've already told you this. And I'm like, well, we weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, why have it have already happened? Yeah. I agree with that. And, some, and sometimes Robert Jordan does that with stuff that I would have actually been really interested to see. Yeah. And so, like, there are times when I'm like, oh, I kind of wish that you hadn't. This previously on mm-hmm. this very cool moment, mm-hmm. and I, I I like Robert Jones' writing, I do, but like there there are some things in this book where I'm like, why did you make this be a previously on section? Why like, do you why do you have so much information delivered in what characters are remembering? Yeah, instead of just letting us watch them go through it. Yeah, yeah. I, the same I don't thing happened know. with Perrin earlier when Perrin's like, all right, I'm going to talk to the the IEO, and then it cuts to well, that didn't go how it was planned, and I was like, wouldn't know, didn't see it happen. Yeah, yeah. It is interesting what he chooses to, like, have explicitly said and have it being, like, re- re- repeated to yeah. us, even though it's, like, our first time. It, yeah. But then he will spend whole chapters repeating information that we already have. Like how the beds yeah. are organized. Um, Dragon Snacks, thank you for that super chat. Smash that like button. And um, if, if you, if Cad Swain is Like that MVP, Cad Swain button? Yeah. Most men can't find Cad Swain's button, but um, all the lesbians can. Narcissus, <laughs> thank you for that super chat. A couple of books ago, Nerdy asked to find an ice seal who is not incompetent. It amuses me how much he hates Cat Swain because she's exactly that. Thank you. I disagree. I think Cat Swain is incompetent. She just thinks that she's fucking God. Not, nah, she's great. And she keeps doing, and, and like, she's gotten better. Honestly, my problem, my I don't mind Cat Swain as much now because of, I'll be honest, I think Cat Swain is turning for me because she's acknowledging that, what? she's acknowledging the how hard the situation is because of the other people's actions and if she had just gotten that information before her first meeting with rand Mm -hmm. i think i would have liked her more Mm -hmm. but it was because she went into that first meeting with rand so double barrel loaded and and it without having all of her facts i just felt like she made such a huge misstep in her first interaction with rand Mm -hmm. that it i found her difficult yeah okay um so i i think that like I'm curious with Cat Swain, but I, I didn't like her first introduction. Yeah. And I also, like, her first introduction was so unimportant to that book. Because, mm-hmm. like, she showed up and then didn't do anything for the rest of the book and then, like, started to become interesting in the next book. Yeah. But she was just gone for the rest of that book. Like, she didn't do anything at all. Yeah. Right? Glenn so, Peterson, thank you for that super chat. You bring yeah. up a really cool point. I I, I agree, absolutely. Where Sora Leah's is like, I don't have enough power to mm-hmm. make traveling work. But I still know how to do these weaves. Yeah, it's cool. Um, but, but very cool. This this is the most we've ever learned about the one power, and that that bugged me. Well, we because we learned that, mm-hmm. and then we learned that the Aes Sedai weird hand waving stuff is mm-hmm. like a learned thing, but it's not necessary. I wish that we'd learned that in book two. There's yeah. Every time we're, now that we're finally learning little things about the one power, I keep thinking like, I wish we'd already known this. Yeah. And like that, that that's a little bit frustrating. Yeah. But it is it is really nice. I, I like the idea that the Aiel and I, the I said I can't re, aren't great at teaching each other because they do things so differently mm-hmm. that like you can't learn a second way. Well, and we finally learn why the I said I have such a hard time with Wilders mm-hmm. because they've yeah. already learned it a certain way, and that's basically impossible to unlearn. But this is information that should have been revealed when my knee when was my going knee through was the whole there. Wilder yes. thing, and like it's just. Yes, because that's why I think Nynaeve needed her herbs to make certain things work at yeah, first. Yeah. But we didn't understand that, and and I do wish we'd gotten that information a little bit sooner. 
Um, you know, I think that this is like very far removed from book two. Yeah, and like this is just, yeah, it, it's it's so fascinating to me that mm -hmm. the information is being laid out the way that it is because it it kind of is it, it it's making up for I think missteps in earlier bits of the writing. Yeah, and I think that that's why people are like, oh, when you reread the Wheel of Time, it's better, and it's because. There are things that are fixed later on. Like the the whole thing about the Wilders didn't really make any sense to me because technically all the every girl coming in is a Wilder until they're in the like you know what I mean? Unless yeah. you find them the day they channel for the first time. Yeah. So the I mean some of them have the spark. This right? explanation of the Wilders makes so much sense mm -hmm. and is so good. I just wish that the I said I had just brought it up to Nynaeve at some point. Yeah. Because they have this information. It's not a secret, right? Like, this yeah. is just information that these characters all have across two different societies. Mm -hmm. It's just weird that it comes up so much later. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I, I do love, though, that Robert Jordan has created this series that is, in a lot of ways, evergreen. There's a lot that you can go back and, and pick up on, and, and you can mm -hmm. reread and reread and reread. You know, like, it's definitely not, like, a simple story. So, Yeah. People are saying we just missed this. I don't think we just missed this. Which part did we miss? I don't. I, I think that I think that people are saying that we miss it because of a lot of assumptions that are being made, but not because it's explicitly said earlier than this. Well, and that's that's the thing is like you guys might have picked up on it because you knew where it was going at the end. But like as a first time reader reading some of these things that like they were very vague or glazed over or like hinted at as opposed to like explained. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm, yeah. Unless there's like an explicit piece of text where Vernon says that, I, I don't, I don't think we got this because I would have been over the moon to get it. And here's the thing, maybe, maybe there was maybe that you know there is a lot of stuff that we talk about in book club, so it is possible that it was. Just... I just think that the 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 White Tower section it, it, over the long term of this series, mm -hmm. the White Tower section of this book is the biggest letdown to me. Because we spent so much time with the scrubbing of pots that could have been given to talking about the one power and like what they're learning. Yeah. And I, I just, I think that it is the biggest misstep looking back on the series in terms of where Robert Jordan decided to focus his energy in writing those scenes. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I just, I do wish that we had gotten more earlier on. Mm -hmm. Um. But that's, you know, that's fine. It's cool that we got it now. And that's why I do, I really actually love this section here with uh, Sorolia and um, Kat Swain. Ferda Woon says Valda mentions the hand waving being a crutch in episode five of the show. Valda. Yeah. He does. In the scene with the Gwen. Um, but then she shows that she doesn't need to hand wave to channel, which is different than the books. Oh yeah. Okay. That that and that gets confusing, right? Because mm. the show explicitly says this is not a thing. Yeah. They're, yeah, that probably is just not going to be like an important. The show, the show very much says that this is not how it works uh -huh. because in the show they are able to channel without waving their hands. Mm -hmm. So much so that he cuts off their when Valda cuts off that woman's hands, he's like, "I don't think it's necessarily necessary, but just in case." Right. It's been. It's like, like a. It's a plot point that's mentioned across three different scenes no, in season right. one it's, that this isn't a thing. It's been almost a year, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of it's coming back to me. But yeah, yeah, you're you're right. The show, we, yeah, we did learn that in the show. And so it is interesting with that, but it doesn't matter. Mm. Um. So yeah, Cat Swain and uh, Sorley they have a great chapter. I, like this is really cool. This is probably the most I've liked Cat Swain, but also Sorley is the the coolest. I like Sorley a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because Sorlia, because Sorlia is what I want Cat Swain to be, which is in charge and powerful and all of those things, mm -hmm. but also does it from a res like has respect for the people around her. Mm -hmm. Like I genuinely believe that Sorlia respects the other wise ones. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that Cat Swain respects the other Aes Sedai, and that is why I like Sorlia more. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, as a character, I like I think that Sorlia works with the other wise ones and listens to them. I don't think that Sorlia dismisses a meese or uses a meese as a prop to get what she wants. Right? Yeah, of course. Whereas Kat Swain literally does that at the beginning of the section. Yeah. She literally uses two Aes Sedai to, as props. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she she just like berates and belittles in a way that I just, I, I don't think is a benefit to her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's fair. Um, Did I write down anything for this section? I don't, anything else? I mean, nope. Teaching traveling. Uh, Sora, Leah, Kat Swain are what I wanted from a female Doctor Who. Agreed. 
But oh. I, but I like, I like my doctor to be older. I've, I've said that. Like, I think that of the uh, Peter Capaldi and um, Christopher Eccleston are more what I like in Doctor Who than even Matt Smith, who I think is great, but he was too young for me. Yeah, he was for a specific generation. Like, he was a yeah. thing that they were going for. They were trying cool something new, and, and I think that it was fun. And, and, I, and then I think they went too young with Matt Smith. Mm-hmm. I think he was too... Because, like, the thing about the Doctor is the Doctor needs to show up with some, like, I am the Doctor. And people are like, oh, yeah, you're, like, an older gentleman who is learned and, like, we can trust. And Matt Smith shows up and you're like, you're wearing a fez. Why should we listen to you? Yeah. Because you have a magic screwdriver. Like the doctor, the doctor having a little bit more stateliness is something that I like a lot. It's tough because like I love his doctor. Oh, 100 percent And I think ways, he's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I get what you're saying. But well, I grew up on Old Who where the doctor was like a 95,000 year old man who looked like he was gonna die every episode. So like I just came into New Who with a different expectation. Wow. Wow. Um <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, chapter 13. We're almost done. We're on the Rand stuff. We're, we we actually are going to be okay. We're going to get under three hours. This isn't going to be a five hour show. Um, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, nothing happens with Rand, so, so we don't have that much to talk about. Yeah. yeah okay, that's fair. Rand um, meets some people and gets angry and loose there and comes back. We're done. Book club over. Goodbye, everybody. Although uh, you forgot that um, your whole thing about they're going to have to figure out the taint. Mm-hmm. It's their spoiler alert. They're going to have to figure out the taint, and I think it's going to be Cat Swain. You know I'm right. Threk just commented Peter Davison was a pretty young was pretty young for a doctor, and I read Pete Davidson, and I was like, Pete Davidson's gonna be the doctor. Give it to me, give it to me right now. Pete <laughs> Davidson oh as the God. doctor would be the funniest fucking one shot. Not not in canon. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. an Elseworlds tale where Pete Davidson is the doctor in Doctor Who. And you get, like, the finest British actors. You get, like, Dame Maggie Smith. You bring Alan Rickman back from the dead to play the villain. Judy Dench is there. Judy Dench is in it. Like, you get fucking everybody, but Pete Davidson is the doctor. That would be the funniest fucking movie. That would be insane. Uh, oh my god I just would, like a spinoff that's not canon Neil Lore says Rowan Atkinson as the doctor but that's, that would actually be brilliant like, that, yeah that would actually be Rowan brilliant. Atkinson as Mr. Bean as the doctor would be hilarious but Rowan Atkinson is a fucking incredible actor yeah like Rowan Atkinson would crush the Doctor Who yeah, yeah Rowan yeah. has played the doctor really in what I don't remember that what it was almost Voldemort yeah, Rowan was in the running for Voldemort. Yeah, it's true. What? <clears throat> okay, anyways, this is not a Doctor Who podcast. Um, I did not know that Rowan Atkinson played Doctor Who. That's crazy. Yeah, I had no idea. Um, so uh, Rand is um, running around Ilian trying to like deal with the you know basically the problem that Samael left him with, yeah. which is that there's an army that wants to take him down. Uh, yeah. But, but also he he's, he's fine. He's fine. He has like a wound on top of a wound, but he's fine. Wounds on wounds on wounds. Wounds <laughs> on wounds. Uh, Rowan yeah. Atkinson did a Doctor Who parody. We're gonna have I to fucking just, have to see this. We're gonna I, have to find this later. How have I not seen this? I don't know. I love him so much, and I love Doctor Who. Okay. <laughs> Reaction. Oh man. We should actually. We should do that. That would be, be funny. Fun. Mm-hmm. Um, that I don't think it would do. Also, it might be patrons and members only. But yeah, that's okay. Um. All right. On their way. Uh, He's basically with a group of people, right? He's he's with the is like the the alien mm-hmm. lords. He's with fucking Weir Weir Ramon, who's a fucking moron. He's like yeah. this guy's an absolute fool. I cannot believe that he's here, but uh, here we are. Um, and then the 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 Tyrans and the Kyrians and the aliens all hate one another, but like some of them don't hate each other as much as they hate the other ones. So it's mm-hmm. fine, I guess. It's 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 a fucking mess. Like it's it's a nightmare. If I was Rand in this situation, I would lose my shit because I can't. I can't deal when people like are not like okay in a, in a room of in like a group setting. Yeah. <laughs> like I would be I would have so much anxiety. Um thousand percent. Because they all just absolutely despise one another. And there's a so there's a band of um Rebels. Re- rebels, I guess, who were following Semiel. Yeah, it's Lou, Khan, Leia, you know. Yeah, exactly. And the Millennium Falcons. There. And so Rand is like, I'm gonna go deal with them, and they're like, oh, God, all of his people are like, he shouldn't. There's a lot of people, and Rand's like, I'm the fucking Lord I'm Dragon, fucking... I'll be fine. They're like, a stray arrow can even kill the dragon reborn. He's like, bitch. <laughs> So he rides over and he's like, go home. Put down your weapons and go home or fight for me. 
but you can't have your weapons and go home. And they and they they raise a really valid point. Yeah, they're like, um, excuse me, your people of the dragon are going around fucking murdering and burning and slaughtering. And your Aiel are as well. Yeah, and, and Rand could have had this moment to be level-headed, and instead he 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 gets very upset. And to be fair, he's frustrated. He's trying to deal with the Shido. You know, like yeah. they are mm-hmm. they are a huge problem for him. He is trying to deal with Masima. Um, but yeah, people are under the impression that they are part of like his army. Yeah. Um, and he loses it a little bit. He's like, I, I'm trying, those are not my Aiel. I'm trying oh my god, god damn it. You have until midday. Yeah. <laughs> and leaves. And I was like, all right. Which is interesting. I, I actually really liked it. Mm-hmm. Um and uh we we get that uh while he's riding over Hopwill, one of the Ashaman, mm-hmm. uh we, we we find out that Hopwill murdered a band of Sanchin. And like took them all out, and, and Rand is like, "That was the right thing to do." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the right thing to do, and because he's like, "Are you, uh, are you feeling it? Because you killed those women?" And Hopple's like, "No, no not no. at all. Mm-hmm. Me, no. I'm a big, strong boy." And Rand's like, "Look, you did what you had to do. No fucking judgment here." Yeah. The Sanchin can't know about us yet. I fucking hate that they're here. Yeah, he's like, "God damn it." Um, but well, we'll deal, have with to deal with that. The other thing as well is when he he goes over to where the bowl was used. Um, and he sees the, like, the, he's like, there's an Aes Sedai weapon, which is scary. Um, but, um, he, he feels the, like, size. No, he doesn't see the bowl. Not the bowl, the, the. That's the not, that's not, that's not the Hopwell. weapon. Yeah. No, that's more in the next chapter. That's the other, um, Oh, that comes sorry, back. I am confusing the two. Yeah, yeah, Hopwell yeah. just yeah. killed a Sanchin patrol. A Fedwin more comes back no. from seeing where the bowl was used in the next chapter. Yeah, you're right, you're yeah, right, yeah. right, you're right. I was confusing. There's too many fucking characters. They could just be the same. <laughs> oh, Ember Eyes says, was it the bowl or was it the weave untangling? The glassing is the side effect of the weave untangling bomb that... Glassing? Yeah. They say that, like, the ground had turned to glass. Oh, yeah, that's because of Elaine. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think about that. I thought it was the bowl, too, at first. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that's the, like, ex- that's why he says it's the I said I weapon. Do you think that the person who wrote Halo Fall of Reach got glassing planets from Wheel of Time? Maybe. You know, I, maybe. Because in the in the Fall of Reach, in, in Halo lore, the Covenant use their ships to glass planets. They glass entire planets. They turn the surface to glass and kill everybody on them. Yeah. And that's like, that's, you know, why they keep doing this all the human planets. That's why they're at the war. But I wonder if they got the idea for that from this moment where that nuclear bomb turned stuff to glass. Maybe. Lightning on sand glass is it, right? Oh, probably it's probably from that. It's probably from that concept. Never mind. Never I mean, that's, that's fine. Mind. I I thought glassing was a kind of a generic nucleus line. Cool. I hadn't heard it before Halo, so never mind. I take I'm in it. I'm not very smart, you guys. The fact that anyone listens to my ideas because I'm a dumbass is honestly shocking. Um I thought the connection was cool because I, I I don't know anything about nukes, surprisingly. Um I, I just want everyone after Wheel of Time to have been inspired by Wheel of Time. I want more people to have read the Wheel of Time. Of course. So that they listen to our podcast and I make money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Capitalism. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, they, Ran returns to his tent where he finds out that uh, Torval has come from With the Mahail. This is chapter 14. A message from the Mahail. Yep. Um, which, uh, Mahail sounds... <laughs> Hile, I know. I know. It's a yeah. little close to... I, I And I don't know if that's on purpose. Yeah. We, maybe we just come up with a different way of saying it. Mahail? We'll call him the meal. The, the meal. Yeah. I just feel like Mahail, I, I don't like it. I feel like it's too close to Hile. It's yeah, weird to me. Yeah. Um. So we're going to go with the meal. So the meal has sent a message. And so Rand is like, all right, I'll meet him in my in my cool tent that's in the middle of a, a field of nothing mm-hmm. so that I don't have to set guards on it all the time because everyone will know if someone walks over, which I was like, that's cool. That's a cool idea. I like yeah. that. No, it's smart, right? Because you don't want to have yeah. the, like, you don't have to guard it all the time. But like if everybody's watching, but it also makes everyone suspicious of one another. The really, the best part of this yeah, whole yeah, thing yeah. Uh, of the previous chapter is when Rand is like, mm-hmm. no one is going to rebel against me because none of them trust each other. So as long as they don't trust each other enough that they have to keep following me, I was like, Rand, that's kind of brilliant. I know, like I hate it, but it is brilliant. Yeah, it's kind of brilliant. I love it. Yeah, that. yeah. And so he's, Rand in these two chapters is crushing it for, for me. I was like, Rand is coming across the way that I want him to. Oh, he understands the assignment. Yeah, he's doing it. He's doing um, the big thing. But the like, it is really tragic going directly from the Soralia Katsmain episode where they're like, Rand needs to learn to 
be a human again. Mm -hmm. And then we get this and Rand is fucking cold as ice. Let's call him the Happy Meal. The Happy Dale Meal. Dale Hendrickson, I love that. Let's, yeah. From now on, he's the Happy Meal. Perfect. I may, oh, maybe MJ Daniel came up with that. Okay, so the Happy Meal sends him this letter through Torval, um, who Rand really doesn't like. <clears throat> I mean, I wouldn't like him either. He seems like a dick. I know. Um, and everyone else is right and he keeps being wrong. And he's like, he just keeps being wrong. No, <laughs> I'm right. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big strong man. <laughs> No, he's a whiny little shit. Oh my god, um, all of the fucking Ashman need to get laid. Yeah. They're all so fucking like, they all come across like giant weebs. To be fair, we have learned that, um, like, what is it, one in ten go mad? One in fifty. One in fifty go mad. And no, one in fifty have gone mad. They're all gonna go mad eventually. Sure. I just mean, like, for, like, you know, they, they don't have the, the, Best end of the stick or whatever you want to yeah. call Glenn it. Glenn Peterson, thank you for that super chat. <laughs> Common Peterson, reaction to Wheel of you. Time is to look for other people who love it. It's a community that yearns to grow. Yeah, I, I, I and that's how we found it through the um, that like that's how we found it through the show. Um, um I, I, I don't know why you uh, deleted that message. That's just we we already know that information. That's not a spoiler. Yeah, that's the fifty one burnout dead trainees. Yeah, that's that's in the chapter. That right. is in this section. It is right. At the yeah, very sorry end. about that, Marco. Um, um, but, um, yeah, that one is included because we get the like ratios and that's when Rand starts talking out loud mm -hmm. and being like, oh shit, we need to solve this problem. And all mm -hmm. the, all the Ashman are like, oh, oh, like they're like, we, is that possible? And they like have this like glimmer of hope and I'm like, oh Rand, you better fucking do it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Baka Karn, thank you for that super Baka Karn. chat. A bit behind on this, but the Wilders being stuck with the way they learn things early on is explained by Varian in the Great Hunt chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Great. Then we did just miss it. Sorry about that. Um, cool. Yeah, I, th I think there's just, there's a lot of information in these books and we're going to inevitably miss some of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, which is why we ask, like, which is why we say, you know, um, we are excited to pick up things on a future read because there are there are inevitably are things that we miss. There are people things that other people miss on the first read as well. So, um, Bazimian says Rand keeps on speaking things out loud that's in his head. Yeah, that's not a good thing to do, especially when you have three women in your life. Because you know, at some point he's gonna be like, oh, "Man, I love Elaine, but Avian has tits," and Elaine's gonna be like, "Excuse me, what was that?" Uh, it's like, "What did I? Did I? What?" Did I say that out loud. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Oopsie. Um. <clears throat> The uh the the other moment as well where Rand is like kinda has like a moment and everyone's like looking at him very concerned and he's like not yet. And they're like, Oh thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um like, so Fedwin Moore shows up. Um and Fedwin Moore is like, yo, uh Sanchin are definitely here. Also, I found the glass place. Uh shit's bad. And Rand is like, oh, okay. And then Fedwin Moore's like, no, they're coming to Ilian next. And Torval's like, how would you know that? That would take their mind. They're not going to be here anytime soon. And Fedor Moore's like, because they, they told they told so me. all of some, these To reasons. my face. Yeah, yeah. And Rand is like, you talk to them? And Fedor was like, yeah, they're like really open about shit. And Rand was like, oh, okay, well then, great job. Like, Good job. Thank you. Fuck you, Torval. Get the fuck out of here with your bitch ass. Fucking being all like, nah. Torval talks. You know how like people, when people are being sarcastic online, they talk where it's like non-cap, cap, non-cap, the letters they like do. Oh, the like, the, like Spongebob meme? Yeah, yeah like Torval talks like the Spongebob meme. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good thing he's going to yeah. die and Rand is going to kill him soon. Yeah, apparently Luce Theron is like Torval's first on the chopping block. Well, and here's the thing is unfortunately it seems like Luce Theron and Rand have become more and more like mel like melded. Like like Luce Theron's not like there, but Rand is now thinking the things that Luce Theron thought on his own and he's like who needs Luce Theron and I'm like he's still there. I don't know. I think that Rand has every reason to have come up with those ideas on his own as well though. As well. I don't think that I like Rand has every yes. reason to not trust the Ashaman. Yes. Especially because Mazrum Tame is not the most loyal. No, no, no. But Mazrum I'm Tame saying... is very clearly like, I, I am the leader of the Ashaman. And Rand's like, no, I am. It's, it's. Yeah. Mazrum Tame and Rand are the Thor, uh, the Thor Star Lord scene. You know what I mean? Where, with the, from, uh, was, was it Endgame or Infinity War? Where Chris Pratt is like, I, I'm the leader of the, um, I'm the leader of the, of the ship. And Thor's like, yeah, yeah, of course you are. Everybody knows you're the leader of the ship. Yeah, who's saying anything otherwise? Chris Pratt's like, yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, it's like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. No, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, the, the, 
Rand is Rand is Star Lord, and uh, ma, ma, the Happy Meal is uh, <laughs> Thor: Love and Thunder. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, and so we learn about the Sanchen coming, and mm-hmm. Rand's like, "All right, let's fucking go. We're gonna fight the Sanchen." And I was like, "Oh shit! I thought that wasn't gonna happen <laughs> for a couple <laughs> more <laughs> books. Yeah. I thought that was gonna happen a little bit more slowly." But like, when he says, let's do it. "Like he's like the Sanchen are annoying, but they're on their own schedule. Like I can't, I can't." So he's like, yeah. well, here's a map, and we're going to figure out where to meet them so that it's on my terms and not theirs. And I was like, okay. How long until Rand the dragon rides a dragon? Book 10. Book 10. Yeah. He's going to get a dragon to ride, right? Yeah. We're yeah. all in agreement that Rand will ride a dragon at some point? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon on dragon. Okay. <laughs> don't Google that. Mm-hmm. Don't, uh, don't, do not Google <laughs> dragon on dragon. Um... Yeah, I so do you think that they are going to fight in this book that Rand and the Sanchen are going to fight in this book? Either they will or Rand won't be in the rest of the book. And both are possible. I don't yeah. think I I think like I cuz obviously look, we joke about Matt being dead. I don't actually think he's dead. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's in the Path of Daggers. Oh, at all. I don't think at all. I think Matt's gone for a full book. Or or, he or he's sh- with the Sanchen. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. going to say I think he shows up at the very end. Baka Akarn, uh, everyone you. misses something, even after rereads. One of the most impressive things about the series is how much RJ foreshadows and sets things up. Mm-hmm. He could do a little bit less foreshadowing, a little bit more obliquely telling us how things work. But yeah, I agree with you. Just, just, a, little, just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Don't Google dragon on dragon. Well, guys, you, <laughs> the fuck is this? He said not to. I said not to. Guys, F's in chat for Matt. So sad. What a good character. Lost so soon. Um, um, and then Rand gives a bunch of people orders that we don't get to hear, of course, because why would we be told what foreshadowing and yeah it's foreshadowing it happened off screen uh and then loose theron comes back and Rand just laughs and laughs and laughs and he laughed and, laughs. and i laughed and they laughed and and, and everyone's like god damn it this guy's going fucking crazy yeah, yeah. and that's the end of the reading we well, did it i love that he's like oh shit the sheep is probably gonna have to get killed soon yeah and I was like, yeah, he's been fucking crazy this <laughs> yeah. entire time. So um, the Happy Meal is just killing people who go mad. I mean, what else are you going to do? It's, it's fair, right? Like when they're like, like it's literally. a mercy. I was like, yeah, honestly, I agree. Yeah. Go I in agree your sleep. 100%. I, well, yeah. How else? Like they showed up there knowing that that might be their fate, right? They yeah. they, they had to know. Um, the, the like traitor's tree, <laughs> spicy. Um, <laughs> hmm. But, I mean, I guess it makes sense as well, right? Because you can't have men who learn how to channel then going around and just doing their own thing. Well, they, going mad and be blowing themselves up and becoming a mountain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, it is too dangerous. Mm-hmm. You either are a man who channels in the Black Tower or you die. And, yeah. like, there isn't another option. Yeah. And I think it's fair. I, I think that it's it's harsh and it is the way of, you know, it, it is an absolute necessity. Yeah. But, Otherwise, a God, ton of innocent people are going yeah. to be hurt or could potentially be hurt, right? And I love I, I love that, like, all, before that part of the conversation, everyone is, like, kind of... Everyone's giving Rand a little bit of disrespect. Like, the Ashaman... I think that a lot of the Ashaman want to see themselves on Rand's level. And all of it stops for that because they all... Like, all of these men who are in the same position kind of take this moment of reflection to go, this is coming for all of us. Mm-hmm. And when Rand, I think it's to Fedwin, and he's like, you'll be with me till the end. Yeah. Like, that was, that was like, a really beautiful sentiment in a really rough way. Yeah. yeah and I yeah. just, I think, like, it was, um, it's really beautiful. I, mm-hmm. I th- This scene, like, took a turn. And after the turn, I was like, oh, wow, there's, like, there's a bond between these men who do not like each other. Yeah. That I find really fascinating to read. There's, and there's, like, there's just a level of complexity here mm-hmm. that you, you don't always get, especially in fantasy stuff right there is yeah. quite a bit of fantasy that is that is more surface level like um it just it, it exists for like i want to say like ya even though it's kind of a weird genre genre um but um the wheel of time is so many layered um mm-hmm. and complex and like and so many sides of dark and light um and and well and yeah we, we talked about this like you know we had talked about the slog early in the episode. Yeah. Um, but, and you had already said this, but I I like this book more than I like Crown of Swords. Yeah. Me too. Things are happening. Yeah. Character relationships are super interesting. Yeah. Like, this book to me is, I, I would, re- I, we're only halfway through. Who knows what happens to the rest of the book? Like, it has to stay interesting to keep me there. But For sure. But right now, I think, Crown of, uh, like, Path of Daggers is great so yeah. far. The character interactions are awesome. I, 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 I don't, yeah, I because a lot of people are like, eight's where it starts. 
And like, honestly, I think that Crown of Swords had more of what I, more like wasted time. And granted, look, the Savannah chapter to me is like, if it matters later on, cool, then I'll get into it. But right now it doesn't really matter to me. But like this book so far has had some really great stuff. I loved the parent stuff, right? Like yeah. I, I think what's going on with parent and Alejandro is really cool. The bowl of wind scene was fucking incredible, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know, book eight has a lot going for it right now. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, how many like dark friends do you think are among the uh, the Black Tower? Because it's three. not zero, right? I think there's like three probably right now, okay. but that number is growing. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. the The more people that you collect, the more that it will grow. Because right now there's like what almost four hundred. Yeah, Ashma, crazy. Yeah, fucking wild. Um, and did you understand the blackberry bush reference? Oh, I thought that was just the tower. The tower? Yeah, like all the little blackberries are the Ashaman. I thought he was talking about the two rivers. What? Because it says, where's the goddamn beginning of the chapter? It's the end of the chapter where the blackberry bush reference is. He's talking about how he, it's, it's Maz from Tain being like, I cultivated the black tower, not you. He's, it's him throwing a dig at Rand. Oh, is that it? I have harvested that blackberry bush myself. I harvested that blackberry bush myself. I, thought, I think it's I think it's Maz from Tame saying this is my. I thought he was talking about the two rivers, a small bush and thorny but surprising number of berries for that size. Like that, there's going to be like two rivers, guys, who are in the black tower. But he does say in a year, Tarvalon will tremble at our numbers. I harvest. Oh, maybe he went to Tarvalon, like the city. That'd be ballsy. No, I think that's what he... Yeah, he's a small bush and thorny. It's like a small, like, town. Oh, I guess, yeah. Maybe. But, like, a bunch of male channelers right under the Aes Sedai's nose. Hmm. Like, right the fuck there. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I, f I feel like that makes more sense than the Two Rivers, because there's no mention of that. I just thought he was starting else. to dig at Rand saying, I cultivated this, not you. Hmm. Which he likes to do. Uh, should we get into high low? <clears throat> yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a segment where I uh, brought back my childhood dinner policy where my family would sit around <laughs> and commiserate over our lows and we'd celebrate each other's highs because it brings us closer together as a family. Mm -hmm. The way we do this is Clarice delivers her high, then I do my low, she does her low, and then I do my high because we like to drop a compliment sandwich into the mouth of the corpse <laughs> that is Robert Jordan at this point. I mean, it's been 20 years, so. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Too soon. Oh my god. You. <laughs> my high. Uh, and chat, feel free to also drop your high lows in there as well. Um, you can also join the Discord and share them there and discuss. Don't. <laughs> don't. Yeah, don't. Smash that like button. Oh my god. <laughs> um, uh, my favorite part of this section um, was uh, Soralia and Katswain. Soralia teaching mm. Katswain to travel because I want to know how Ked Swain's going to use that and how like how long it's going to be before she actually like puts it to use and also like that she's dynamic. already put it to use <laughs> it was immediately I don't know uh maybe she's going to show up in Rand's bedroom next chapter <laughs> no she needs to know where she's going no she needs to know where she is oh right right right, right. um Anyways, yeah, that interaction is my favorite and the fact that like Ked Swain now like owes Soralia something um very interesting so yeah that's going to be my high Mm -hmm. What's your low? Uh, my low is the Savannah chapter, probably. <laughs> That's fair. I don't know. It just it's uh, it's it's not even that it's bad. Like it's well written and interesting. And that's what's so fascinating about it, right? Is that like in a different book where Savannah was more important, it would be a really cool chapter. Mm -hmm. But in a book where like of the fourteen chapters, it's the only one about her, and, and nothing really happens in it. It's like it just becomes my low because. There, there, there's just so much going on mm -hmm. that like I wish the book was a little bit more succinct the, the, the series this book is actually pretty succinct but that the series was a little bit more succinct mm -hmm. and I'm yet to be convinced that I should care about what's going on with Savannah that's fair and that could change right like all of these Savannah chapters could be really important to me on a reread because I know where it's going but right now I'm just like they're in the middle of nowhere doing random shit I, I just don't care. Yeah. And so I, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. For me, I think the low was definitely that, like, three pages about the about parents' camp. 
Oh, yeah. That just I literally for, just forever. skimmed through. Because yeah. I was like, I don't, I just, I don't, yeah, eh, no thanks. <laughs> yes. Um, so that that's my low, but what's your high? Um... This is, there's some good stuff in this section. There's so much good stuff. There's, it's that, tough. Here's uh, the, 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 scene between, the scene between Perrin and Aleandra was mm. definitely my high. I just think like him him being so good at manipulating people just by being himself and being honest. Yeah, he's not like trying to manipulate people. Yeah, the, the Cat's Wing chapter was definitely not my low. I, I think the Cat's Wing chapter was great. Um, but um, yeah, the Ale Aleandra, the whole thing with him and uh, Aleandra was great. I really liked it. Um... Crash Bandicoot says, I kind of wish someone would go in and edit Wheel of Time down to around eight books removing unimportant tangents. We could do it. No. Fuck no, we could not. Why? I don't. Do you know how much do you know how much work that would be? I'm saying You would have we, to read the books multiple times. I'm not saying we will. I'm saying that like that's a job that I think we would be good at. Actually, oh, no, we go yeah. off on too many tangents. You know, yeah. that's that is a straight up lie. Too many tangents. <laughs> David Zoller, you could edit it down to one if people talk to each other. <laughs> Literally, if they communicated. Um, yeah, no, so yeah, my highest parent. I, I just, I love that scene for parent. I think that it's really cool. I love the idea that Manethrin's coming back through him like accidentally getting into it. Like, I think that's very fun. Yeah. So yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Uh, all right, we're gonna do our last segment after we do our goodbyes. Our last segment. Our segment. <laughs> uh, which is a good time to tell you that this production of the Nerdy Nightly Entertainment Company is brought to you by Audible. Audible is a service that puts the words of books into the mouths of readers uh, and then it's records those and then puts that into the headphones of you or, you know, open air speaker systems. You can re listen to Audible on basically anything that has a speaker. Uh, that is the gift that is modern technology. And so you can go to audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly right now to get your free audiobook and a free month of Audible on us. That's right. It's a gift from me and Clarus to you. Considered it an early Christmas present. Uh, go get your free audiobook at audibletrial.com slash nerdy nightly and listen to something good like uh, yeah. Halo, The Fall of Reach, which is an excellent, excellent book. You're like, it's a video game tie-in novel. No, it's so good. Fall of Reach is legitimately a fantastic novel. Go listen to it. Uh, Dragon Snacks, thank you so much for gifting five memberships. We have five oh. new Nargs. David Zoller just came up with the best Audible sponsorship. What? Audible. If if the smell of books makes you poop too much, go to Audible. AudibleTrial.com slash nerdy nightly. That's a good one. If you want to avoid the Makio Akio mm -hmm. phenomenon. Yeah. And before we get into Smart Corner... Smash that like button. Yeah, smash the like button. Uh, you can follow us around the internet. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. And I'm at Clara's Polaris. You can like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the dislike button. Leave me in comments down below because the algorithm god, boy, she's hungry and we must feed her. This week, this episode, that algorithm goddess is... Soralia. Soralia. She's very hungry for that favor that Kat Swain owes her. I don't know if she's hungry for it yet. I think she's willing to wait on that one. We shall see. Um, I was going to say the earth because it was hungry for water and it finally rained. <laughs> uh, and uh, now it's time for Smut Corner. Now that we've done uh, our goodbyes. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. I, I. The problem is I feel like we we did so much smut um, through this section. Sora, Leah, and Cad Swain yes. show each other the lesbian skills they've learned over hundreds of years of life. Thank you. They've both been alive for so long. <clears throat> oh, my God. The things they would know how to do. They probably they would have the every weirdest skill. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have every single skill. And you know, yeah. you know. Oh, my God. Cad Swain, I didn't bring it up earlier because I wanted to save it for Smut Corner. Mm -hmm. Cad Swain has a knitting basket that has pockets with things that people would be shocked if they found. Sex toys. Cad Swain has yeah. a knitting basket of sex toys. Yes. And she uses all of them on Soralia. And she makes Alana watch. And Alana is horrified. Wait, and Rand is across the country being like, Alana is going through some shit right now and I don't know what it is. It is the feeling of Alana watching Cad Swain absolutely go to town on Soralia's puss with oh some big old dildos. You, you think Soralia's a bottom? No, I think they're both tops, so they have to switch. Okay, but Cad Swain okay. has to teach Soralia how to use the toys, so yeah. she tops first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's got like her like bag of holding, mm -hmm. um, and it's just you just you reach in there, and you, who knows what you're gonna grab. Cad Swain <laughs> makes disturbing erotic art. Like, and she like puts it embroidery? next to her dildos. Yeah, yeah. Like she's doing her like safe for work embroidery in front of other people, but she actually like does like. Cad Swain cross is bad dragon. Yes. No, Cat Swain makes like erotic like cross stitches. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 a yeah, thousand yeah, yeah. percent. You know, um, in House of the Dragon, all of the um erotic um orgy art. Yeah, that, on the walls. Uh, Allison had taken down. Um, that was actually Cat Swain's art. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I Chad see. Spain was the original artist of uh, the House of the Dragon. That that makes sense. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. thousands of pictures of flowers. Flowers. The flowers are vaginas. Well, and that's the thing is she was like, it's like the Aes Sedai symbol with a man's fist crushing it with a bunch of vaginas around it. Yeah, but the real crush is the woman's vagina around the man's hand when he's fisting her. Because she says that it's going to be like disturbing. shocking yeah, and yeah. disturbing to people. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If Cat Swain has a fisting kink. That would not surprise me at all. Yeah. Not well. If you're 400 years old, your vagina's been through some stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you. The array, it out. An average size penis doesn't do it for you anymore at that point. No, the vagina is expands and contracts. You're fine, but it just it's well, been. Yeah, and if you live to 80, if you live to 400, the you, problem that's with not how the that problem works. with living that long is that you would be like, I'm gonna try some weird shit because I'm bored. You would try weird. Oh, you try the weirdest shit. That's why the two of them. Like they, they get sweaty in the sweat tent. Nobody know? who lives to be 250 isn't bisexual. Yeah. Just out of boredom. Yeah, at that point you're like, I've had enough dick. Where like I know what that is like. I also think that the foursome between Fael, Aleandra, Anura, and Berlain must have been crazy. Oh my god. For uh, for Fael to be like, I need a ring of people to stop people coming in and watching the four of us go at it with each other. And the thing with Bear Lane and Faya like hating one another is that like keeps it spicy. In oh there. yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, Alejandro's like, oh my god, are they? They have a spanking competition once a week to see who can get the other's cheeks redder. Brian, Kinsey, thank you so much for that s- <laughs> dropping of ten nardy nightly mamber shops. There you, go. you got there. Wow, that took a second. Woo! Dyslexia is a wild thing. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> thank you so much for those. Gifted subs. Harry Wolf, oh Jolly, God. Alden, Ty Still, First Survivor, <laughs> Nicholas, uh, uh, Kyle, Charles, Taviran. Yep. Well done. You crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing so good. You tried it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh Ladies and gentlemen, uh, all lesbian sex in the. Do you think there's a lot of gay sex going on at the Black Tower? There must be. Oh, I mean, yeah, like, what else are you going to do? You, Somebody is gr- guzzling down that happy. Well, meal. your life is so dark. Honestly, they have to have some joy. My joke so hard. <laughs> oh god, I think that uh, King of the Dark One has his own black tower. If you know what I mean. Do something nerdy tonight. Thank you to our mods. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Wow. Okay. 